faces versus just a name. Just throwing that out there. Um, I am so happy that you all are joining today. Uh, we're going to talk about and do Linux. And interestingly, when people ask, um, do you know Linux? Most people say uh, they either do or they don't. And the people who actually say they do, that means they know how to manipulate it from the command line, not the GUI, right? So the purpose today is to make you all feel comfortable so that you can actually do that. And this will get you started in whatever it is you wanna do, cybersecurity, networking, uh, penetration testing, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, my name is Dr. Wesley Phillips. Feel free to call me Doc West. Everyone else does. And um, I am going to be your instructor for today. Um, people will be coming in. There are approximately 80 to 100 people. Um, um, please work, make sure you all work your mute set, your mute button. And I'm going to give you further instructions as we go along. Welcome to the course. I would love to meet you all, but it's like 100 people. So I don't know about that right now. Okay. See here, I'm clicking my little button. It's not working, but that's okay. We will fix it. All right. Um, I would like to give a shout out and a thanks to Blacks and Cyber uh, headquarters. I mean, we have the CEO, the uh, the uh, Chief Operating Officer, and uh, O'Shea, the Director of uh, Training. Uh, Nico Smith and I had a great conversation. Uh, we were kind of working out a plan to make this thing work so that our uh, people in cyber, our black people in cyber can come in here, receive this knowledge and go forth and prosper and big and keep it moving in their actual careers, get promoted, whatever it is they wanna do. Um, also too is um, my company is Professional Certifications and Consulting Services. Uh, I've been in business uh, working on four and a half, five years now. I've, been, I've helped hundreds if not thousands of people get into the profession. I happen to know quite a few recruiters and they're always calling me, asking me, hey, do you know anybody who has these skills? So guess what? Um, I would love to be able to tap this big family and say, hey, I have Josh, I have Mila, I have uh, Quanisha, here you go, check them out. Okay, um, I think I covered everything I need to cover there. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, whoops, that's one. Okay, um, as a little introduction, a little more formal introduction, this is my introductory slide again, Doc West or Dr. Wesley Phillips. Let me pause that video right there. Okay, um, I'm originally from New York City, born and raised in Harlem. Um, what else? Uh, I went in, uh, after 18 years old, I joined the Marine Corps, served my country, uh, kind of grew up faster than I wanted to, but it happened and I'm proud to have served. After uh, law enforcement, I went to the phone company for a stand. I don't have a picture up here and uh, got laid off about 10 months later. I was a junior rookie guy, so that's just what happens. Then I went to uh, law enforcement. I worked in federal law enforcement for quite a long time. And uh, in fact, I started off with the former Immigration and Naturalization Service. I did that for about two years and nine months. It was very painful. Um, I had more fist fights than you can shake a stick at. But anyway, it was a job, it was cool. And uh, I'm so glad to have survived that because there was some close calls. Uh, war stories, one day we meet after COVID, we can talk stories. Um, I left uh, INS and went to US Secret Service. I worked for the Secret Service for almost 15 years. I protected the President of the United States. I uh, traveled all around the world. And the irony is I did not, I was not remotely interested in IT or cybersecurity, but guess what? I got into IT and cybersecurity while working in law enforcement with the US Secret Service. And uh, from there, they sent me to NSA, National Security Agency. And I actually completed this course right here, Cyber TSCM. What is that? Well, that is technical surveillance countermeasures. And I did that for a long time. I was messing around with, um, first of all, they taught me how to build a computer, how to um, take it apart, 
and how to put in whatever it is I wanted or needed to put in, if that makes sense. Very much James Bondish type stuff. I couldn't believe it. Uh, we even had the, the service, seriously, we had um, phones with shoe, uh, shoes with phones in them and a whole bunch of different cool little devices. Um, this course really taught me a lot. I was using Ethereal and checking packets and uh, Ethereal is what we call Wireshark today. But those who may not know, I feel like I'm showing my age now. But anyway, um, this was my introduction to cybersecurity and physical security. And I've um, um, been doing cybersecurity ever since. As you can see, I finished a few certs here and there. Um, um, I, I like to think that I'm pretty well versed in IT, cybersecurity, and project management, even Scrum. Um, I graduated from Colorado Technical University. Um, I have a doctorate degree in management, a master of science in management and information system security, project management and information system security. Um, what else? I used to, I started teaching college post law enforcement. Um, I worked in the Microsoft Software and Systems Academy where I taught veterans hands-on cybersecurity. Um, and um, I looked at the curriculum, I scratched my head and said, I don't know if this is what they're gonna do in the real world. So I enhanced their curriculum, got promoted to become the curriculum and uh, developer. Um, I started adding in Linux, which is some of the stuff we're gonna to do today. Um, of course, I added in different certification courses and embedded them within the course. Uh, we did some cloud stuff. We did capture the flag. Um, got a little story about that. It's really quick. I took my uh, veterans to a capture the flag um, um, event and they came in very first to capture the flag. They came in top 10% out of 3000 people. So for a second there, I was proud Papa. Um, it was, um, a huge learning experience. Um, I've had great conversations with Nico Smith, who is the director of the Capture the Flag with Vic. Make sure you uh, really get this information today. Put your hands on it, because what we're gonna do is, my bad, um, I want you all to not be afraid and go ahead and do those Capture the Flags. Nico's an awesome instructor. Um, I teach Capture the Flag too. Um, but you know, we have a strong, big family of people that teach a lot of different things. That's why you're here, right? Take advantage of what it is that these strong professionals have to offer. Um, you know, in my, um, my personal life, I'm a martial arts practitioner and instructor. Um, I study six different arts. Um, I, I've been doing this since eight years old. Um, um, this video over here is my son. Uh, I, I was training him since he was six, he was 16. He's kind of nasty now, he's 26. Just, and I mean that in a good way, like not like he's nasty. Um, I love doing calisthenics. You always find me in a park, well, pre-COVID, um, doing pull-ups and planches and muscle-ups and stuff like that. Um, also in my free time, um, you know, I built a cyber escape room, which was awesome. I put it out in a North Carolina, um, Northern Virginia Community College, I actually posted it in an event and um, it was the number one event to my surprise. I'm always doing something cyber, IT, and I play piano, organ, I sing, and I love seafood. So I just have to throw that out there. I don't know too many people that don't, but there are a few that are allergic to it. So um, I'm gonna play this just for a few seconds. This is me and my son. This is more like fun time real quick. I studied Wing Chun Kung Fu for a few years. Um, this is an exercise called Sticking Hands. This is just a beginner level. You were supposed to go slow. But anyway, um, it's just, um, when I started teaching, I really didn't think I knew how to teach. I'm always still learning even today. Um, probably still don't know how, but I'm still learning today. Um, my thing is, as a martial artist, and I have had real fist fights in the law enforcement profession, and I've had assailants as small as 150 pounds and as large as 300 pounds. Woo wee! The thing that I did on the guy that was 150, I tried to do the same thing on the guy that was 300, totally different. Had to pull out a different tool, 
had to so uh, figure out another way to engineer this individual to get him where I wanted so I didn't get hurt or so someone else didn't get hurt. So actually, I try to apply a lot of those different principles to cybersecurity and IT. The last thing I didn't mention is in my day job, I'm actually the deputy program manager of cybersecurity with the Department of Treasury. I work in the GSOC, the Government Security Operations Center. I train my tier one and tier two analysts. I, most of them come in with a military experience. They may have um, a secret clearance or something or a top secret, and um, they may have a security plus. That's pretty much it. We put them through. Uh, we, we also try to find out what type of person are you? Are you a good guy, good girl? Um, are you a problem solver? Are you a critical thinker? Um, how do you work on the stress? Right? How good are you at researching things? Are you, can you actually do something if I give it to you, even if we don't know how to do it? So we teach them basic things like Linux. We teach them command prompt. We teach them PowerShell, Python. We teach them a variety of different things. Teach them how to do tickets, incident uh, response, uh, digital forensics, et cetera. In BIC, they offer all of that and then some to the big family, to the big community. So make sure you get yourself in it. Do not be afraid. I was speaking to some people yesterday when we were installing their Kali Linux machine and um, their, um, their uh, virtual box. And they were, some people were saying, I was, I'm just afraid. And uh, they also admittedly said, I didn't really know where to start. I can appreciate that. I get it. But all I can say now is I am the uh, Black Sin Cyber Training Coordinator, right? And I work with O'Shea Bowen, who is the Director of Training, and the entire big headquarters under the, the CEO. Um, we are just doing what we have to do to make sure we give back to our community. Take advantage of us. Any questions? I'm gonna keep on moving then. Okay, um, um, this is my company again. I already summarized it. Um, uh, I do more than just certification training. You can get certified from a variety of different sources, but um, the big thing that I, I probably do is the, the customized skill-based training and instruction um, and the soft skill instruction. Um, I also do curriculum development and enhancement. I actually help this company, a nonprofit company in, I think it was Minnesota, um, built them, a, a hand, enhanced their curriculum last year. And all of a sudden they applied for a grant. They beat out the college. They got $230,000. And again, that was a proud papa moment. You know, so um, uh, if you all need some help outside of it, let me know. Okay, there is a certain level of proficiency that all people should have. You know, what is your skill? What do you know how to do? What is your expertise? Okay, so what I did was I created this self-assessment for proficiency. If you have no proficiency in Linux, I would love for you to click this box. We're gonna give you a poll momentarily if it's not shared already. If you have some awareness with Linux, then go ahead and click this one. Simple situations, but you need extensive guidance, okay? Um, then there's also basic, somewhat difficult situations, frequent guidance. You know, everyone, you may need some help from a resource of some sort. Intermediate difficult situations, occasional guidance. You know, every once in a while or otherwise I'm good. Advanced, considerably difficult situations, little or no, no guidance, right? Expert, key resource, everybody comes to you, right? The thing is the challenge is difficult in work or in play and man, I gotta go to such and such because he or she knows everything about it. So take a few minutes, there are 28 participants, fill out this poll really quickly, I'll give you a minute and then um, we'll move on. All right, we are working it. I see three people did it.
And just so you're not surprised, I'm gonna give this exact questionnaire to you at the end. So we can see um, how well this presentation is going and how it should maybe be adjusted for future students. If it will be even used, you may hate it. That's okay. Be articulate in your responses, please, when the opportunity comes up. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat and uh, raise your hand um, so that we can try to address that. I want this course to be as organic as possible. You know, I'm, I'm, I wanna talk like we're having a conversation versus uh, I'm in college and I've been teaching college for 10 years and I'm teaching you. That's not exactly what I want, okay? All righty then, we are about halfway. We're doing outstanding, Just keep moving. We have two more minutes. Oh, oh that's counting up. We're almost at 100%. You know what? I'm just realizing these are the wrong questions. <laughs> this was supposed to be the self-assessment for proficiency that um, our moderator was supposed to post up. So uh, big moderator, if you don't mind, uh, you can stop this poll and um, put up the self-assessment for proficiency. Sorry about that. She closed the, the um, poll, just a little oversight. This one's gonna be for your next uh, assignment that I give you. I was wondering, I was like, easy, moderate, difficult. It was the research, we didn't do anything yet. <laughs> Okay, in the meantime, I'm gonna to continue to move on. If you don't mind, moderator, just post that. And when you all get it, take that poll. Okay, expectations. So um, I'm just gonna open up the, the mics for like a minute. What expectations do any of you have for today? Feel free to say something or type it in the chat. So I'm seeing here, I wanna be able to remember the commands to add to my skill set. learn basics of cybersecurity, get more familiar with Kali Linux, learn how to use Linux and cyber. I wanna become an expert, LOL, I love it. <laughs> Basic understanding, using the terminal, understanding the foundations, basics, okay? Want to learn more about the Linux OS? So many people say that is essential in cybersecurity, and that is true. Um, some pen testing techniques. All right. You can come to my pen testing class then. <laughs> so, um, just so you all know, this blue badge, the big badge, this is a um, uh, base level uh, training session here. So this course, this particular course is designed for absolute beginners or novices, you know, career transitioning professionals, you know, hobbyists, anyone that just wants to learn Linux, you know. Uh, we're not telling, saying that anyone that's advanced can't come to the class. We just want you to know um, that this, this class, if you're at, wanting advanced practitioner type stuff, that will probably be another class that we will instruct in the future. And then we won't do the base level badge, the blue badge, we'll do something like the red or the, or the yellow or the other different colors, okay? Um, so I mentioned this up front because I don't want you to be expecting me to do some privilege escalation and we're gonna be SSH in, in, into a server and everything, that's another class. We'll do that later. Okay, alrighty then. So I'm seeing questions 
uh, oh, statements here. What is your proficiency level? And I'm seeing um, it's not done yet. Um, there's 64% done and we only have 11 more people. Um, I'm gonna give it about 30 more seconds to a minute. All right, we got eight more people left. Love to get 100% um, participation, please. This data is very useful for uh, me and big headquarters. So we know how to give the audience what they want in future classes. So what I'm seeing here, um, we have about 17% of people with no proficiency. Okay, this class is for you. Awareness, um, about 21% of you. Okay, for you, basic, about 40% of you. We have some intermediate and we have a few advanced or at least one advanced person. We may have this person teach the next class. Yeah, or we'll teach an advanced Linux class. We can do that. All righty then, 78% of you have um, voted. Um, we don't have any experts here, okay. Thank you all for this information. Um, keep, um, continue, continue to, uh, to fill it out as you see it. And I'm going to move on, okay? All right, learning tasks. We have um, some things that we are going to do today is blatant right there in front of you. We're going to type in SQ commands in the command line interface. Conduct online research, analyze content and problems create directories, files, and some files with notes. Hopefully you are also taking notes. We want you to write down as much as you can so you can remember what you did. We're going to navigate through the shell, use some open source tools. Don't be surprised if I say, hey, Josh, can you uh, share your screen real quick and we work this problem together because I want everyone to be interactive. If you have two or more screens, you'll easily be able to display your work and see your work as we're also talking. But don't be afraid, don't be mad. If you're mad, just let me know, but uh, I don't mean it. And um, we're gonna work individually, but we're also gonna work as a team. So if you have a problem, situation, a question, how do I do this? Okay, let us know. Maybe I'll let you share your screen, you share your screen, and then we'll try to help you and fix it. I will tell you, here's a hint. You type one character too many or off incorrectly and the script may not work as intended, okay? Uh, we're gonna earn some points because at the end of this, we're gonna do some, some cybersecurity challenges. We'll see how well you grasp what we did thus far. And then we're going to, um, what I wanna do is I this course is designed to empower you, to give you your authority so that you can develop a methodology for how you solve problems, how you critically think, think and apply your skills to this situation in front of you, okay? So I, I really want you all to grasp, man, um, this is a good way. And then guess what? Enhance that and come up with your way, right? What I'm teaching you, um, these are just some of the things that I know of or even with other people, how they solve problems and how they perform tasks in Linux. Um, you come up with your own solution, okay? Most importantly, I want you to have fun. Are there any questions about the learning task? I'll give you uh, 10 seconds. You got the chat or you can say something now. Make sure you know how to work that mute button and the share your screen button. Okay, I don't see any, so I'm gonna press on. Okay, the agenda today, we're gonna to learn what Linux is. We're gonna discuss the different flavors or distributions, the distros. These are some of the key words that we talk about in the industry. We, got to, we have to talk about the father of Linux and know who he is. We're gonna go through the GUI and the CLI. Graphic user interface and the command line interface. You need to know the differences. We need to discuss the anatomy of a command, what rolling releases are. 
we're going to do some basic commands. Um, I may show you a little demo or even have someone actually add a user or change ownership of a particular user. Um, are we going to go through an activity called Kali Linux on your own? Navigate more basic commands. Search the web from the command line interface. Definitely going to do absolute and relative paths. Then we're going to do a few capture the flag um, problems and see how you roll from there. We may open it up to, to questions and then even um, some additional um, commands. Any questions about what we're going to do today? It's a very ambitious agenda, but I think we can do it. Kind of did it before, so hopefully we can do it. I will tell you this whole online thing with 100 people, definitely different. So, you know, I'm, be patient with me. Oh, by the way, if you need to take a break, uh, you're an adult, just go. Just mute your, your screen, handle your business, come on back, okay? But I will give a break around an hour and a half mile mark, uh, um, minute mark, just so everyone knows, okay? So warning, this is an interactive learning experience. I'm not gonna be talking all the time. I wanna hear what you have to say. Um, so again, work that, that screen. So we're gonna get started. Does everyone have their Kali Linux machines um, open? Uh, no. No, what's going on, Toby? What you need? Uh, no, nothing. Let me let me open it up. You gonna do it now? Okay. So um, if just open up your virtual boxes or VMware or virtual machines, open up your operating system, Kali Linux, Ubuntu, uh, Parrot Security. Um, I'm going to be working from Kali Linux. Uh, that's the request that I put it. It's a Debian-based Linux distro. And there's a reason why we are using a Debian based versus another type of distro. The, the commands are different. So I wanna make sure we're all on the same page. I don't wanna leave anyone behind, okay? Um, and also too is the more I can get you to put your hands on this stuff, that will make you more confident, hopefully, and allow you to say, I got it, I'm starting to get it, or you know what, give me a few more weeks and I'm really gonna have it, I'm gonna be that expert, like the young lady said, right? Ironically is where I'm sitting now looks very similar to the screen that you see here. Um, I have about six monitors over here and um, at work, um, one little desk, you'll see easily six, seven monitors. Monitors turned sideways, people doing reversing um, um, engineering, malware analysis, you know, doing forensics, everything. So um, if you don't know what to expect as a cybersecurity analyst, it looks very much like this um, on steroids. Simultaneously, remember in this cybersecurity field, it's so broad, you may not wanna do the technical stuff. Maybe you want to get into project management. Maybe you want to become a policy uh, writer or developer. Um, learning these hands-on skills are still useful and they still won't hurt. They're just going to add to whatever it is your, your policy writing. It's going to add to how you manage these tasks in your projects. It's going to add to how you solve these real cybersecurity problems that take place. Okay. If anyone has any questions, please ask. I'm going to move on to the next slide. Yeah, uh, I think I might yes. need help. I think I might need help opening my Linux. Uh oh. I wish I was there with you, Toby. I would definitely help you. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. not do, sure. Do I, What's do the I, problem you're having? Okay, do I open the VMware first or? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, open the virtual uh, machine first. And, and then like, you should see it right there in your, um, so your virtual machine is actually your virtual box manager where you can upload as many distros as your system can handle as your memory will allow and process. And then you should be able to click right on it and it'll open. So do I, do I create like a new um, virtual machine or cause it seems like there's one that's still there from yesterday. Click on the one you did from yesterday. 
Okay. Let me know if it opens. I'm gonna give you a few seconds. Okay, yeah, it's, it's open. All righty then. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so open your virtual machine first, your virtual box manager, and then click on your operating system. That's for everyone, just so that we ensure that we're all on the same page. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next slide. I don't know what that red line is there for. Anyway, I would like for you all to, you know, try to indulge me, okay? I would like for you to actually close your eyes, right? There's a reason for this. This is a, um, a, a learning strategy. If you close your eyes, I want you to think. Everyone needs to see and experience total darkness. Imagine that you have to communicate in this total darkness without saying words. How in the free world are you going to do that? How do you know where you are right now? What do you hear in the total darkness? What can you touch and feel in the darkness? What can you smell? Who's in the darkness with you? What can you do? The reason why I want you all to embrace this feeling, this, these emotions is because this is what the adversaries do. This is what the hackers do, the attackers. We as security researchers need to learn how to work in the dark. And that's why I mentioned at the beginning of the course, when people ask, do you know Linux? And that is almost a prerequisite for many cybersecurity technical positions. It'll be written. Uh, it's a big plus if you know Linux. It is a great start. Why? Because we will use Linux in capture the flag. We will use Linux in development. We'll use Linux in uh, maybe the, um, networking. You can use Linux in a bunch of different things, maybe for your personal applications and some things that you want to do just for local administration. And Linux is actually embedded in almost every system, including our Macs, Mac computer users, or our Windows users. Linux is embedded in everything. We'll talk more about that as we continue to go on. I just want you to put yourself in a position of the ethical hacker, the penetration tester, the unethical hacker or the hacker, the developer, et cetera, and say, okay, this dark area right here is what I'm gonna learn how to take control of. I'm gonna do it just like they did. And the interesting thing is most of the hackers that I know, I actually know some malicious hackers. Um, they never went to a school. They never came to a formal class like this. They just started poking around and start doing stuff. So we're gonna to try to establish and strengthen our methodology so we can do the same thing. Okay. So first things first, if you are opening up in my day job or in my play, if I open up a Linux machine, one of the first things I do is a sudo at dash get space update a pseudo space app dash get dash upgrade. Why am I doing that? Can someone tell me? To get the latest, I guess, tools. Yes. Right. And to update the dependencies. That's right. And there's a there are other reasons why too. You know, Linux is open source. It is an open source operating system, which means that any of you, if you so decide you can create your own Linux distro. And because Linux is open source, you know, in other words, Microsoft has, I don't know, X amount of employees, whatever that may be, 50,000, I don't know, throughout the world. And they make their updates and they send it through their process. And on Patch Tuesday, first of the month, every month, you know, Microsoft will release all of its patches. Well, what happens on Wednesday? Zero day attack, a new patch to make Microsoft Word better, a new patch for this or that. So because Linux 
is maintained by the people, the entire world that I actually enjoy and update Linux. We need to conduct our updates and our upgrades so we can have the latest patches. I can recall teaching a class uh, on Quantico Marine Corps base and I did an exercise in Linux and it worked fantastic. The students were, oh my God, I know how to do that. A week or two weeks later, I tried to do that same thing with another class and I was scratching my head myself, what happened? It's not working, right? Two things. One is I did my updates and my upgrades, so it should have worked. But what happens is Cali Linux has about 600 plus ethical hacking and penetration tools that's open to the world. Any one of us can go on in and just start poking around and start messing with it and start learning. And what happened was Microsoft, uh, Google, actually Google, did some, um, some patches to the actual attack I did because we did an attack um, by sending this particular image to someone in, a, in, a, in a infiltrated their machine. Well, they, uh, there's a, I call it uh, the, you know, the cat chasing the mouse or, or um, cat chasing his tail um, because we're always doing that push pull. We can attack and then it works for a while and then they block it, they write a script and all of a sudden, bam, we gotta figure out another way to get around it to get in. So do your updates, do your upgrades, um, do your research, pay attention to what's going on in the industry because it's always changing. So what I want you to do now is I like for everyone to open up their terminal. If you don't know how to open up your terminal, I will show you. As a matter of fact, let me do that just in case. I wanna stop sharing my screen for a second and I'm going to share my other screen, which is my Linux machine. Can you all see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I needed that one. Okay, so we're going to type all of us sudo apt dash get dash update. We're going to do them one at a time. We could do multiple commands. Then we're going to hit enter. Then we're going to type our password, hit enter. And what we are seeing now is one of the rolling releases that takes place in Kali Linux in that environment. We are updating our machine. As you can see, and I did this on purpose, mine is actually doing some updates. I'm expecting yours to do the same. Is there anyone having an issue with making this update? No? Taking heads is nice. I can see that. That's awesome. Uh, my, mine was no, it, Go ahead. What did you say, Toby? Go ahead. Um, I said mine was saying unable to fetch some archives. Ah, sometimes that does happen. When was the last time you did an update? Was it yesterday? Y yesterday. <laughs> yes, what it does it say? Does it say um, maybe to do a full upgrade or auto remove at the bottom? Because says, reading maybe, this information is vital. It says maybe run app get update or try with fix missing. Okay. So that's probably what you have to do. You'll, you'll have to read that line of text and type in sudo app dash get um, either fix missing dash dash fix dash missing or auto remove. But I'm sure that your machine is up there because you and I did it yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes that happens. After this, what I want you all to do, we, we did an update. We're gonna press the up arrow so that that last command will actually show. That's another thing that's cool. You continue to press up, it'll show you all of the last commands that you actually typed. If you click down, you'll come all the way down to a fresh start. So what I'd like you to do is now to type sudo apps get dash get space upgrade. Okay, now we're gonna hit yes, or we'll hit enter. Then it's gonna say, do you want to continue? And we can see certain things are actually, auto, let me see, the following packages were automatically installed and no longer required. Use sudo app auto remove to remove them. Okay, then I'm gonna hit yes. 
and I'm doing my updates. This update sometimes takes a little bit longer, but I will let you in on a little secret. I did my app upgrades and upgrades yesterday. And look at how many things are actually upgrading this morning. That's an example of what I was referring to earlier about the world is going to maintain your Linux machine. My updates are done. Okay, but it gave me instruction. I'm going to follow that instruction. Pseudo at hit. Uh oh. Auto remove. Yours may have said it, may not have. So what it's doing now is the following packages will be removed. Sometimes packages are deprecated or updated. I hit yes, and my updates are taking place. It's removing those packages that are no longer needed. Hey Doc, I got a question for you. Yes, sir, Jonathan. I'm, I'm looking for, because I, I forgot my password. Uh, I hadn't been uh, in my Linux you're in Cali Linux? Yeah, no, I'm in the, the 20, uh, 2020.1 version. Uh, the username I'm, should be Cali. The password should be Cali. So I'll try that. Because I'm, I'm, I'm sure I changed it before. Oh, so, you I, changed it. But, but I, I didn't try Cali. I was trying um, you know, the, the, the room tour. Go into, hold on a second. How about that? I want to minimize this. And I'm going to open up my virtual box manager. <laughs> Drag it over real quick. Um, now, I don't know if it shows when you change it, but on my virtual box manager, you see what my password and username is? Right. Take a look and see if yours is like that. Uh, yeah, it is. It says it anyway. Outstanding. All right. Appreciate it. You're so welcome. I also have a question, question too. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, will this same exercise work in Ubuntu? It should. Okay. Because Ubuntu is a Debian-based system. We'll talk about that a little bit later. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. This should work in Parrot Security, too. Okay, so the lesson here is as soon as you get into your machine, you should conduct a sudo at dash get update and a sudo at dash get upgrade. And I will tell you, there are various ways to do this. Some of the advanced people, they know this. Sometimes you can type in um, sudo app dash, dash get update and, and app dash get upgrade and do them simultaneously. Yes. Right. And there are a few other commands too that you like can what? do. Say again. Question. Sorry. What is the difference? And you might have already spoken about this. What is the difference between update and upgrade? Oh. Well, one updates yeah. brand new packages, maybe removes packages, and the upgrade is probably going to upgrade the current I packages that's already there. Would you like to eat? Okay. Mm. All right, so I just muted Jonathan because uh, we can hear his conversation. Okay, yeah. are we all on this same page at least? Uh, not quite. Uh, What's I'm going on, Joe? Sure. Yeah, mine is now saying it's, it's saying this APT has super cow powers. <laughs> yeah, it does say that sometimes. Um, so am I on the right track? <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on. I think you're on the right track. Um, okay. Here's a good thing. If anyone has any questions or issues, we can always talk after this, okay? Okay. Meanwhile, and just so you know too, I have only, only about 50 slides. So I wanna try to push through because we only have three hours and um, I have some fun things in here for you to do and some of them are time sensitive, okay? But if anyone needs to, to talk to me after this, I will make myself available and we can do that. And I'll help you out with your super cow powers. Okay, so let me switch my screen, come back over here.
share the screen again. Screen three is here. Okay, gonna hit this. Okay, so we're starting in Linux. We're in the dark. We don't know where we are. So you know what I want you to do? I want you to find out where you are. So what I want everyone to do is I want them to type the command. And, and think about it like this. Whenever you're typing in a script or a command, you are commanding this terminal to give you some information and you expect to receive and read that information, okay? In this particular case, we're gonna talk about PWD and LS. So I'm gonna flip my screen really quickly so we can kind of do this together. Where is it? Share screen, go back to see. Okay, I'm gonna cl type clear so that I can make my screen clear. Did everybody see that? If you just in case you wanna do that, I'm gonna type PWD. What does PWD mean? Does anyone know? I know someone does. Password. Ah, print, cool. Directory. Print, no, so no. print working directory. Print working, print working directory. So I type PWD and it tells me slash home slash Cali. What that is letting me know is that I am in the Cali directory. So when we start working in our Linux machines or on our machines, uh, in this particular one, my Cali Linux machine, it's letting me know that I am in the Cali directory. We will go over understanding where you are momentarily. PWD is often used, okay? Check this out. If you want to know more about PWD, you can type, what is PWD? And what does it tell you? It will tell you print name of current or working directory. Very important to know where you are. Toby, you all right? You're making faces. Yes, next, hold on. Okay, I'm good. Okay, so now that we understand where we are with PWD, I just want, and we know the, the command what is, I wanna show you another command that will give you help if you need it. You'll type PWD dash dash help. And what does that do? It gives you a short synopsis of the different, what the, the definition or the description of what it is and the different options. And it also gives you some exit status right here. This is how you can, this is one way of how you can understand what different commands mean. Okay, we're gonna do one more, okay? Man stands for manual. PWD, enter. That gives you even more options. Sometimes they're flip-flop. Other times you can type in say man and a command and it'll give you nothing. Sometimes you'll type in a dash dash help, it will give you nothing. Sometimes you'll type in what is and it'll give you nothing. What do you do then? That's when we have to go to um, Google, maybe YouTube right, call a friend. We're gonna to have to do research someplace else so that we can find out how this command actually works so we can make it work. So in this particular case, this gives us the name of the print name of work current or working directory, different options, right? And we have the dash L for logical, dash P for physical, avoid all sim links, et cetera, et cetera. The author, reporting bugs, Etc. You can scroll down. Um, there'll be more information. And then, as this last line says, manual page PWD1, line 1 of 44, and press H for help or Q to quit. So, what we're going to do is type Q so that we can quit. There are various ways to quit certain commands. Q is the one that we want to learn right now. Hopefully everyone is good with that. If you have questions, let me know. If I'm going too fast or too slow, let me know. 
Okay, now, another way to kind of tell where you are. Where am I? I'm in the dark. I type this thing called PWD. I commanded the shell, the terminal, to tell me where I am. My current working directory is Cali. Well, also too, let me type in this other command that I happen to know, because somebody told me, to list the different items there. So I'm gonna type LS, which is short for list. And when I hit list, it tells me that I'm, in, in my Cali machine, I have desktop, documents, downloads, music, uh, open VPN, Pico CTF, pictures, etc. What do these blue things mean? Does anyone know what those blue things are? They look like uh, folders. You got yes. Directory. Yeah. They yes. No, they, they are directories. Know. They are folders. Directories and folders are synonymous terms in this particular case. So these blue blue represents directories or folders. We will go through this when I show you the GUI and the CLI comparison, and it'll hopefully get a lot clearer to you. But in this Cali directory are subdirectories or subfolders, desktop documents, etc. Okay. Now, since we are here, let's change directories. Let me show you how to do that. Change directory, CD, is something that can be done in various different command line interfaces. If I type CD space desktop, <coughs> okay, and I hit enter, you will see the word desktop show up, which will let you know, which will indicate that I'm in my desktop directory. This tilde, which is if you look at your number one and to the left, that's gonna represent the home directory that you started in, okay? That slash desktop is showing you what they call the absolute path, summary, sort of, to get to that desktop. So how do you also know where you are is just to read this different coloring that's over here on the left, or to the right, excuse me. If I wanted to go back, into my Cali directory, I would type cd space dot dot. Then I hit enter, and now I'm back in my Cali directory. So I'm just showing you how to go back and forth. We want to take our time to go back and forth. Feel free to play with that so that you can understand how to move around. There are many more commands, many more CD commands that we're gonna go through, but I just wanted to give you that for now. So we did PWD, we did um, LS, and we did CD. If you wanted to, to know more about LS, what, what, what can I type here to, know, to learn more about LS? Shell or something. Say again? Uh, do a long list then. Dash L. Okay, so LS dash L will give me a long list, yes. But what I want you to do is M A M A N. M A N. LS. LS. Awesome. I'm trying to teach you. I want you to remember, kind of memorize. I need help. What does this command do again? Oh. Okay. So that was correct. You can do a man, a manual LS, and you can get to see what all the different options are. And the gentleman was just talking about dash L, which gives you uh, the long list. Where is it? Dash L permanent. It's in here somewhere. Looking for it. There it is. Use a long listing format. Okay. And, um, there are others. You can use the dash A, for example, and that'll show you all of the formats, uh, the folders and directories that are listed there, including the hidden ones. Okay, I'm gonna queue to get out of here. Um, just for, for time's sake, if I type PWD dash dash help, that will also give me a short synopsis 
of, oh, excuse me, LS dash dash help. That'll also give me a short synopsis of what's there. You know, um, you can choose which route or which um, way means of help you want to do, which also could be YouTube. You can do what is LS as well, and it'll tell you in summary what it does, what this command does. These are commands that you'll be using quite frequently. I'm going to clear my screen so I can have a nice, clean, fresh screen. Just so you know, too, if you um, you right click in the dark and you click something, say, like split terminal horizontally or vertically, now you'll have multiple machines, multiple um, screens, um, command line interfaces that you can actually work with. This is something that I figured some of you may actually like to see. Any questions so far? Okay, I'm gonna keep on rolling. I'm gonna switch my screen. Okay, so this is what we did. We did PWD, what it is, what is PWD, PWD dash dash help, man PWD, feel free to memorize and try these for any and every command that we may do today. So we did pseudo apt and we didn't talk about it. That's okay, we're gonna talk about it now. So let's just say I gave a command. You could give the command apt-get update and then that's the same as saying, make me a sandwich. And then this is the response you're gonna get. What? Make your own, make it yourself. You know, get your own update. It may respond and not allow you to actually make, do the updates. So what a lot of people do is they do pseudo. Pseudo make me a sandwich. Okay. What does pseudo mean? Anyone know? Super user. Super user do. Okay. It's like you're logging into the machine as another user that's not within the group. So in other words, in the real world, if I can get access to your, um, this is sharing, right? Okay. If I can get access to your um, terminal and I can download Linux, I can go buck wild on your machine. I can have, I can have all kinds of root access. I can do anything. Anyone can do that. So we want to, if you're like, say, working in a Linux environment, you may want to turn the pseudo off. You want to harden the system so that no one can just come in here and do that. You may want to turn off a lot of other features, too, that we're not talking about. Because if you, if you have pseudo, you can privilege escalate into almost anything and do almost everything that they want to do. So I just wanted you to understand what super user do, do, do means. And APT. Anyone want to take a stab at what APT means? Or oh, advanced persistent threat? Or is that something ah, else? that's one APT. <laughs> <laughs> that is the APT that we worry oh, about at work. Oh, apt, in reference to this, it's apt. Apt, which means advanced package tool. So when we do a pseudo apt get, we are super user doing, or um, downloading an advanced package to getting our tools so that we can upgrade our system um, so that we can perform a certain task as root. Because root is almost like God. You know, root can do almost anything. Okay? Going to press forward. Okay. Now this is where the fun begins. Woo! I have some activities that I need you all to do on your own. This is a 15 minute activity. It can be done in two minutes, but um, I'm not gonna pressure you like that. Um, what I need you to do, you have your terminals open, complete tasks one through five. The experience level for this thing is novice or absolute beginner. You don't have to know anything about Linux to do this. 15 minutes, here's a hint, here's a suggestion. You may want to use your favorite search engine. Up to you. Good luck if you don't use it. All right. Your task: install 
and execute these commands in Kali Linux. Any questions? Okay, go. I am here, type chats, ask if you have a question. Don't, um, feel free to ask one another if you have questions too. Someone may get this up really quickly. Someone else may be taking long. What did you do to get it? This is a part of the teamwork. Let's get this task done. Very similar to if you went to work. Hey, I got a task for you. Install and execute these commands in Kali Linux. If you finish first, let me know. This can be done in Ubuntu. I install the locomotive. Okay. Is that a question or a um, statement you, that you did it? Statement. Ah, awesome. Okay, keep on rolling. I'm monitoring the chat. Somebody say, what was that command? What was that, Jeffrey, so I can give it to you? Or split cream. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm typing it in the chat. What are you doing when you're done? What was that question? What are you doing when you're done? Oh, when you're done, let me know. Oh, okay. Awesome. Who who was talking to me? Uh, Sean. Sean. Okay, there you go, Sean. Good, Sean. Hold on a second, okay? I may have to use you in a minute. Okay, Jeffrey, I just responded to you. So Sean, how long did that take you? Um, like two minutes? Uh, yeah, maybe. You must be one of the advanced ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> really? Okay. Well, then that's even better. <laughs> Sean, if I had prizes, I'd give you one, but I don't. Got it already. <laughs> <laughs> a great community and a great teacher, I think. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. The community is awesome. Um, Vic is doing it. That's all I can say. Yeah, it's my first time. <laughs> awesome. And you all formulate Vic, so we're all doing it. That's what's up. Hey, we got somebody else that's done. Awesome. Oh, well, someone said, what do you mean the matrix? Do you mean C matrix? I'm just gonna say yes. It's like my clock stop. That's I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. <laughs> Cheek. 
Hey, somebody said, uh, I installed Pac-Man. Is that okay? Yes. I'm monitoring the chat and responding out loud. Sorry to everyone else that doesn't understand what the word I'm talking about. Okay, so we have less than 10 minutes left. If you have a question, feel free to type it in the chat. I'm monitoring it. Okay, so how do I get the matrix thingy? <laughs> okay. I'm going to have someone show you, okay? So, oh, I already installed it. <laughs> All right, good job. Keep going, keep moving. That's what's up. Just need to get out of it. Okay, I wanna type a chat to you. Did you get out? Man, it runs pseudo figure to correct that problem. Somebody is helping you. Hey, clock stopped again. So I know when I type. A response to someone, the clock stops. So I sped it up a little bit. If you are having a problem with something, don't worry. We will, we will get you through this. We'll, we'll probably, um, we, I have something in mind for you. So how many people are done? Can you just shout it out or put something in the uh, chat? I'm probably my virtual machines, follow along the lecture, and ask more questions after class. Oh, man, I'm sorry you have a problem, Phil. So I'll definitely help you, OK? So we got several people done, done, OK? I hadn't started yet. Mine's still updating it, or upgrading, rather. Ah, uh, okay. Did you just come on, or? No, I had to. Um, after I got logged in, it, it ran through the uh, the updates and then the okay. upgrade. Um, but my my zone alarm, my antivirus blocked it, so I had to turn it off yeah, and rerun one. the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, I did that yesterday with somebody. <laughs> okay, I think this thing is 
I pause it because I typed the response. Seems like a lot of people are done. Oh, with one of them saying stuck on number three and four, three and four. Okay. Um, fire. Oh, okay. Um, I will help you, Mila. And the heart. I will help you. Since we're really close to the end, we're real close. We're only like a minute away because I clicked the button. <laughs> we will get through this. You guys ready for the answer? I can shorten this up. I'm controlling this clock. Is it a uh, star red? Jeffrey says yes. Right. I should have came with some advanced stuff for some of you. Oh man, could not open lock bar, man. Are you rude? I can't get past this error. Oh man. Lenore, you and I are gonna have to work after this. Um you can um permission denied. You may, I think I know how you, how you do it. You probably have to go into the, the games folder and root and stuff, but uh, that's that's gonna take a minute because we have to trial and error. Can't get past this error, I'm so sorry. Oh, snap. All right, then I guess the, our 15 minutes, our mock 15 minutes has gone through. Let's help those, um, let's help everyone understand how this happened. And then uh, for those of you who are having issues, I will make time for you uh, today, tomorrow, whatever. Uh, tomorrow will be better. And I will help you get through this. Sean, you finish first, right? Uh, oh, sorry, I was, uh, I was on the mute. That's OK. okay. You, fi you finish first. Do you uh, mind sharing your screen and showing us what you did for the first one? Um, yeah, sure. Awesome. Okay, hold on. Let me stop sharing. Let me get out of this thing. Exit. Pull this thing up. Stop share. Can you share your screen, please, sir? Uh, yeah, one, one second. Short thing. I think you've disabled the screen sharing. That's what it says. <laughs> let me correct that right now. There you go. Can everybody see it? Uh, it's not blank. Yet. There's nothing on it. Say what? Can everybody see it? No. Oh, it's coming over now. Yes. Oh, okay. So I think so the task was tell, tell us step by step what you did. I think the task was install SL. So oh, the team uh, locomotive, yes. Uh, you want to be, you want to have the privilege to do it. So you need to type sudo, which you have described stands for super user do. So it's telling the terminal like uh, enter super user and perform this action. Uh, and then you want to type uh, uh, apt, which is the get um, the, the package. package uh, and then uh, type dash get and the command that the terminal is going to execute would be an installation. So you type install and the abbreviation for that command, I mean for that, uh, for that program and hit enter. In my case, it's installed, so I don't know what I should do next. That's okay. What well, I have a question for you. What did you do first to know that you had to type in this command? Oh, go. <laughs> I go so, over that. <laughs> so show us what you Google. Let's do it. Because this is gonna oh. help someone else out. Uh basically what I just Google what you what we had on the screen, which was um I'll bring my screen over. 
Sure, sure bring it over. Don't be shy. Uh, pretty much. Um, oh man, I got all kinds of bookmarks. Uh, hang on. <laughs> 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 Let's try to hide this or something. <laughs> you don't have to hide it. We know what you're doing. <laughs> All right. Uh, one hey, so so you Googled it. Go ahead and press enter. See what it says. Um, all right. So here's my... That looks better. Uh, yeah, you see all my com all my stuff in here pretty much. From my That's history. okay. Do the SL. Do the steam locomotive. Okay. Pretty much just type uh, install SL Cali or something to that effect. Google finishes it up and uh, no, sorry, I can't type. That's okay. All right, so install steam locomotive Cali. Boom, it's right there. Uh, looks pretty good and updated. It says four days ago, so it's indexed pretty fairly okay. new, so I guess it's probably something that's updated. And actually, boom, there it is. Okay, and then you copy that or you type that into and go I back tried, to the next thing? I tried copying it, but I can't. Uh, I guess my uh, my guess edition is not working, so I just type yeah, it. it. It happens. It's not a big deal. We can talk about that afterwards. Then hit and enter. Then, yep. And I guess it's saying it's already installed. Right. And then how do you execute the command? Um, okay, now I'm going to, No, I don't know. <laughs> how do I execute it? Yeah, how do you execute the command you just installed? Oh, like to call it? No, what do you type? Um, type SL. Hit enter. Oh, you to call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you just type whatever, uh, whatever the program's called. That's right. So, but here's the thing. Now, this is not about just fun and games. This is about methodology. You have a problem. You have a situation. You're at work. If they tell you something to do, you need to figure out how to get it done. It's two o'clock in the morning. You're on the midnight shifts. Google can be one of your best friends. Right, whatever you bookmark, um, whatever is in your logs at work or in your blogs. You know, for example, my analysts have a bunch of different blogs that they share with all of the different socks in the DC area. And they say how to do this. And they go in and they actually execute it and get it done. Now, these are from minimal things to very advanced things. So, what I want to empower into you Il, is that, hey, you have this task, this problem. How are you going to solve it? He solved it. Thank you very much, Sean. Uh, Can I have welcome. another volunteer to do the second one? Uh, Say something. Or I'll pick you. I'll volunteer. Okay, Toby, share your screen. Let's do it quickly, okay? We can roll through this. All right, look at you. Thank you. Okay, so you, which one are you doing right now? Uh, so the second one was, I uh, can't remember. I gotta pull it up myself. Yeah. <laughs> it was um, The Matrix. Okay, yeah, the matrix. So just tell us what you did first. Okay, so I first I first went to Google. Okay. And you I, did I, what? I just typed in install matrix um on Linux. Okay, and then what command did you do? Uh so it was uh let me type it. Go ahead and type it in and show us. No, to, no, no. Type the command. Yeah. Because we know that oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. What did you type in? Sudo app what? Get install C matrix, I believe. Okay. And then you okay. just type in C matrix. And then Ooh, you fancy, huh? You fancy, huh? <laughs> All righty then. Now, um, how do you stop it? 
Uh, what I did was I went to no, action. No, 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 no. Type control C. Oh, okay. Click back into the um, get get, get off the edit and then type control C and that will oh. stop it. Oh, okay. All righty. Outstanding. All right. Let's get one more volunteer and then I'll do the last two. Who wants to do um, fire? Stop sharing your screen, Toby. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh. Stop share should be at the top. Oh. Bob, I don't know where it is. <laughs> Yours. Awesome. Okay. Mila, you ready? Yes, but I didn't get this one, but let me try and figure it out now. So let's do it right now. Let's see. Let me share my screen. Share your screen, Mila. We help you. My sharing. Okay. Okay. Pull open your Google machine and drag it over. Or, okay. or whatever search engine you use. It's also know. fire gel. You know, I think I'm going to have to stop. You know, you know what? Stay right there. I'll help you. I'll guide you. Okay. Go. Well, you see where that dragon is on the top left? The dragon Click that. Top left. Yeah. Click that. Web browser. There you go. Sorry. I was using my other browser. Okay. That's okay. And then what did you type in? Or you, you need to help with this, right? But what is fire in Cali Linux? That's what I typed. So <laughs> I couldn't what find give you? not much of anything. So I don't know if it's this. That's okay. So this, I'll tell you what you're going to do. It may be here. Yeah, maybe. So, yes, yeah, so that's, that's what I did. That's it. That's it. Oh, oh. okay. Uh oh, what'd you do? I'm not sure what's going on with my computer right now. It's Okay, well, I see you hitting buttons. That's one. So we're going to stop hitting buttons. So go back to the left, to the way it says rise fewer. I don't speak German. But... All right, I am in Germany. Um, uh, okay, go back to rise fewer, planning, whatever. All right, my computer's just running crazy right now. Okay, is that it right here? That is it. Look for the command. Scroll up to number one. So he, is there you go. Different? App dash get install Libra dash bin. Okay. Copy that. Okay. Okay. Go back to your terminal. Okay. Up uh, is up to the top on the right where it says Cali at Cali. Okay, that works too. All right, right click. Oh, go back to your terminal. Is it here? Yes. Yeah, good. Right click. Yes. Paste selection. It may work this way without the pseudo, but if it doesn't, hit the oh. up arrow. Hit the right. up arrow, it's the faster way. Left arrow all the way over, right pseudo, space, enter. Woo! Thank you. You are welcome, you are doing it. <clears throat> so half the battle is research. Take your time, get comfortable. Um, Tom, now go back to that web link again. Oh, the web link, okay. It lets me. Sorry, I don't know what all this is. Look at the it's the one it's the one next to it. I think. I was there, but my computer keeps. Scroll running. down to number two. Uh oh. Sorry, right. I have too many pop ups that keep appearing. Oh, those are pop ups, down. huh? Okay. Yes. What does it say to type? A A fire. Go back to your terminal. A -A there you go. Type AA fire. Wow. Thank you. You are welcome. Tell your friends. Okay, so what we want to do is we may think that it's one command and it may not be that. So that's why I put that. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to do the last two. Um, thank you all for sharing your screen and actually completing this because I wanted to see what it is that you're doing. I need you to do it. Okay, so um, for this one, I did my research as well on Google. Um, and then I found it, the, um, 
the command, I type sudo apt install rig, rig, which is short for a random identity generator. And I hit enter. Notice that I didn't have to type git. And when I did it, it gave me Chadwick Morrow. That's my fake identity. Okay. Now, for all of these commands, you can do man rig, and you can take a look at different options. Well, maybe I want to be a female instead of a male, right? Respectively, use female or male names, dash F or dash M options, right? There are other options, the number output of identities and all of that good stuff. So since I have that there at the top, I'll type in rig dash female. I don't want them to catch me. Now, Lily Burnett. What I'm trying to do is show you how the anatomy of a command will work and also how to do research. This is the research portion before we get into that deeper stuff. Can you, can you reach the show uh, the command prior to that? How'd you get the rig? How did I get to rig? Um, I typed, okay, hold on. Okay, if I type history, It'll show me all the last commands that I typed. 305. Another thing that I can do is I can type the up arrow on the keyboard, and it'll show you the exact function that I did to get to uh, um, whatever I did, um, the last function. So man rig manual space rig is how I got to that. Or I could type rig, I mean Q, I can type rig help, which is not as informative as the manual. The other thing that we discussed from the beginning is what is rig? I'll tell you what it is, random identity generator. Uh, what, what was, I'm sorry, what was yeah, the command ahead. that you typed uh, where you said you didn't need to um, type git. You did apt, but you didn't do git. Oh, what was that one? Um, sudo apt install rig. Okay. Now, in your Google searching, what I did was I typed, um, let me see, for the first one, steam locomotive Linux. And it just came up right here. And then I followed that script, just like the rest of you did. Right? And here's app dash get. Sometimes you can just type apt install. So it just really depends. Does anybody want to guess what sudo yum install or sudo dnf install is? Or brew? Probably for a different. Uh... Uh, right, it's right here in plain English. It's for a different distribution. We are all should be using a Debian base, which means we're going to use these app sudo app get commands versus sudo yum install, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so that's very important. We'll get to that momentarily. Okay. So I'll go back to my Cali machine. The last one um, we did was Pac-Man. So I did my Google search, install Pac-Man Linux. Then when I do that, I type Pac-Man once I get it installed. And then guess what? I don't know, maybe I'm aging myself. But when I was a kid, I loved playing Pac-Man. And that's me playing, y'all. So you want to have fun. The reason why I'm showing you these fun things is just so that you can yeah, score some short victories. Was this really difficult to do? No? That's good. I see this, so I think I'll take that as a no. So that's awesome. Let me um, share, switch screens really quickly. Have some points to discuss. Share a screen on the other side. Screen. Three is this, share, slide, show. 
current. Okay, so um, now it's time for poll one. And um, I like, there are only five questions. It'll take you like a minute to do it. Um, but just for discussion purposes, was this uh, easy? Was it moderate? Was it difficult? Right, and the, that, that's gonna be your first poll questions and there's several other poll questions. 32 people online. Type your answer real quick. We'll talk about it really quickly. Awesome. We got some people say it's easy, some moderate. There are some people having technical challenges. I really need to help you and I don't mind trying to help you after this. I'm sorry, I can't take the time to do it now. Okay, we're halfway done, that's awesome. Okay, uh, 20 people out of 32 that did this poll. Um, um, just wanna open up the floor for one minute, just for discussion purposes. What um, uh, was this, why was it easy or, or difficult or moderate? That's what we see. We see 80% said that it was easy, 20% said it was moderate. What challenges did you have? I guess the only challenge I had was the fire one. The, the fire one, right? Um, mm -hmm. So putting in the right keywords for researching would probably would have helped you and Mila that I saw. Right. Um, you were close. And from that, Mila had it. She just had to scroll down and click on something else. <laughs> okay. Um, I do know that one person is having a technical challenge. And somebody, some people said other. Um, what challenges do you have? What, what does other mean? Um, okay, the problem I had was with um, finding the the right name. You know, you just said like we should install Fire, we should install, you know, a random generator. So I had to like Google random identity generator. Then I found Re. Then okay, that was the only problem actually. Yeah, you know what else too? What that probably would have helped. I should have copied that information to sent it in the chat. I don't know if I left it up or not, but um, maybe I did. But okay, so the key words to search for whatever we're looking for, uh, we're seeing that is important. We may want to include the word Linux after it or before it too, or what it is that I typed in the, in the instructions were install and execute, whatever the verbiage is. So install uh, and execute Steam locomotive, Linux or install Steam Locomotive Linux, install random identity generator, et cetera. Hopefully that'll help. Mm -hmm. Or you can write Kali Linux. What search engine, hey, 100% of you use Google. No one use Bing or Edge or Yahoo? Actually, I, I use Duff.go. <laughs> you use Duff.go? Yeah. Did you find it? Yeah, I stay away from Google. You stay away? <laughs> We got a Google hater in the crew. Don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so your confidence level. So we have some people um, that have some high confidence, about 24% of you, 29% of medium, and 48% of you are low. That's expected. We're just at the beginning. Uh, reach a confidence level installing and executing. We have 19% of you are low, 48% of you are medium, 33% of you are high. Okay, 21 out of 33 people actually participate in this poll. Thank you very much. Okay, at this point, it is 2.35. Um, I'd like to give everyone a five minute break. Um, I'll take, uh, can you come back at 2.41 and then we will reconvene? 
Everybody good with that? Nature call break. Coffee. All right, and, uh, coffee. I'll see you in a few minutes, okay?
Okay, everyone, five minute potty break is now done. Okay, so welcome back. Let's proceed. Okay, we just talked about this. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Okay, so these are the answers. These are the apps, uh, the commands that I actually typed in or that we typed in so that we can actually execute these fun commands. These are open source material, they're online. They are helpful with understanding the how to type a command and proceed. Hopefully this was helpful to you and something fun to do. I just made a word okay. document with those. I was going to sure. share it. And as a matter of fact, <laughs> I'm going to put something together and share it with you all at the end of this so that you all don't just walk away like, what do we do? Not to mention, I think they're streaming and recording these this video as well. So there are various Linux distros and commands. Um, obviously, if you type DNF install SL, it probably would not have worked. It would not have worked, rather, um, for your Debian-based system. So Debian or Ubuntu-based Linux distro, these are the commands that you want to type. You Google it, and it tells you a specific command that's slightly different from that, then do what that says. Okay, if you're running uh, Fedora or CentOS, etc., there'll be totally different distros. Um, Arch Linux has the Pac-Man commands. Um, Arch Linux is really cool if you want to do some like advanced penetration testing. Kali Linux has like 600 plus uh, ethical hacking and penetration tools. Um, Arch Linux has like 1,400 plus. It's crazy. <clears throat> Pressing forward. There are various different distros, uh, categories of distros. So here's the Debian base in yellow. Here's the arch in blue. You have this pinkish red color for Red Hat, Fedora, et cetera, Slackware, Gentoo, et cetera. This is your, your periodic table. There are many more that exist. Um, I think it's over 600 plus different distros. It could be many more than that. But it's important for us, depending on the distros we use, excuse me, the, we have to know it so that we know what commands to actually type in the section when we're working in the dark. So tell me about Linux. I know a lot of you are, the, what you know is what you've done today. There are some people who know a lot more what is Linux in your own words? From what I was told, Linux is actually the kernel, not the operating system. The Linux kernel versus the operating system. So uh, Linux was built on top of Unix. Um, Linux is more so a person's name. It's uh, uh, a bunch of different commands and a program that was actually executed to ultimately become Linux. And um, I'm not gonna argue there whether it's not the argue system or not. You probably are accurate with that statement. But Linux, the Linux kernel is, um, the kernel of the Linux is, is basically the, the root of the package programs that formulates what we call and know as Linux today. But in the end of the day, Linux is an open source um, uh, uh, Linux kernel that was an operating system based on the Linux kernel. And it was recreated by a gentleman named uh, Linus Torvalds. Linus Torvalds, uh, he first released this September 17, 1991. He was actually a student. Uh, he was a Finnish student from, you know, Finnish. And, um, he decided while making in class, I'm going to take this operating system that he's working on and he's going to make it open source. Who does that? Most people want to create something and they put their name on it. And, you know, I guess we're selfish people sometimes we want to get paid or something. But he created this thing, he put it out to the world, and the world embraced it. Then you had uh, regular people, large companies, 
adding to the Linux uh, 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 kernel and creating their own operating systems for their applications. Um, because of that, Linux is everywhere now. I mean, like every in almost everything electronic, it is all throughout your houses. I'm sure many of you probably have a, a smart telephone. Uh, obviously, you have laptops and computers. Maybe you're a Roku, or you're driving a smart car. Uh, Linux is in it. This is Linus Torvalds. He is the person who created it. This is actually a short video. I think it's like a minute and change. I want to play it real quick. I think it's important to know. Hey, welcome. I'm Linus Torvalds, and I started Linux in 1991. One of the more interesting parts about Linux is how it turns out in the most unexpected places. So when I started Linux, I needed a, an operating system for my own use. And today, you find Linux everywhere, in small embedded devices, supercomputers. This technology allows you to expand into many different niches. The thing that makes Linux interesting to me is all the interesting technology, but it's also all the people involved and working in an open source project where you work with hundreds, potentially thousands of people makes the whole technology even more interesting. Hopefully this turns into an opportunity for you to find something you find really interesting to do. And one of the nice things about Linux and open source in general is that there's a lot of different things and everybody has something that you can give to the project. Okay, so uh, Linus Torvalds is the head of the Linux Foundation. If you were to poke around, say, edX or Coursera, he has Linux courses there. These courses are free. Um, take advantage of them. Continue your practice. By no means in this three hour session can I get you um, to become a Linux expert. Um, but I'm just trying to show you some foundation for whatever it is that you want to do. Um, whether you want to work in cybersecurity, uh, blockchain, uh, mobile, um, there are a variety of different options out there that actually exist for you so that you that with that require Linux. It's literally everywhere. So um, uh, CompTIA actually has a Linux Plus certification. Um, the Linux Foundation has some courses and certifications um, um, and LPI, Linux Professional Institute, also has Linux training that will uh, drill down into specific areas. You can also learn Linux by, the, by, by this. Get into a community of people and just start applying uh, new tricks and tips and skills. This is way beyond games here. This, this is very serious. Um, in the CTFs that, um, that uh, Blacks and Cyber does, uh, Nico Smith is an awesome CTF instructor. Take advantage. This will be the foundation for you to ramp up into actually solving problems. And hopefully we will get to the end. I actually have a few problems here for you to solve too. Okay, so we need to discuss some basic navigation and a few more commands in Linux. In order to do that, I wanna explain this thing as quickly as I can. Most of us probably have worked or work in a traditional uh, organizational hierarchy that looks similar to this, right? Maybe you will be in financial management or you'll be a, a, a department head of a, uh, or so forth. So we have board of directors and CEO, right? Chief executive officer. And then there are various departments, sales and marketing, production, human resources, et cetera. And then underneath that, you have your sub departments. So tailoring this towards the Linux um, uh, environment that we're gonna talk about, um, think about the CEO. I'm gonna uh, excommunicate the board of directors for now. It's probably easier to understand that. Think about the CEO as root. This will be the root of the Linux uh, terminal. Then from here, this is a subdirectory under the CEO. 
within that root. And these, think about parent, child as well. So the CEO is a parent, the children would be sales and marketing, production, et cetera. Well, guess what? These children have children too. The sales and marketing has fields, field sales force, e-commerce and direct sales and customer service. Production has component manufacturer, product assembly, quality control. Finance has its two children. Okay, so in some cases, in, okay, in some cases, um, depending on the hierarchy of your organization, if you were say in financial accounting, in order for you to come and talk to e-commerce and direct sales, you would have to, okay, step from financial accounting to finance, then come over here to sales and marketing, and then walk down to e-commerce and direct sales. In other organizations, you may be able to just go right straight to e-commerce and direct sales. You shoot up, bypass all these things, and come right over here and handle the business that you need to take up, care of. You know, it, Maybe even in your homes, you may have a similar hierarchy if you don't work. You know, how are you going to communicate with mama and daddy? Um, if you want to go on a vacation, are you just going to go or are you going to find out from mama and daddy you can go? Or uh, if you have children, you know, uh, you definitely want them to come to you to ask for, to get permission, which is a very important thing in, in the Linux environment, in any command line instruction. Permissions. And, and uh, you know, to actually execute a particular activity. So I want you to kind of think about this um, as we look at these commands, but I want to give one example. So let's just say you're in customer service. How would you get to managing management accounting? What process would you, what flow would you follow? Can someone tell me? How would you get the customer service to management accounting? CD out of. Say again. Uh, change directories uh, out of um, customer service. I'll probably go okay, back. So you will go from customer service, I'll help you, to sales and marketing, over here to finance and then the management accounting. Before we get into the specific directories and so forth, I just want everyone to understand this concept because it's new to a lot of people. A lot of people don't know what change directory is, but you can think of these as directories, all of them. So you have a directory, a CEO, which is similar to root. Then you'll have your sales and marketing subdirectories, et cetera. Then you have subdirectories underneath them accordingly. And you can build these directories as needed. A lot of them are already pre-built and you may not have the permission to use them without um, official um, permission, but we can talk about that later. Okay, keep that in mind because we're gonna revisit that. But now we're gonna talk about the graphic user interface and the command line interface and why this is important. Essentially, everything that you're doing in the command prompt can, can be executed from the GUI. But when people ask, you're a pending cybersecurity professional or networking professional, do you know Linux? We need someone that understands Linux. Not only will you understand the GUI, but you will also understand the command line. Okay, so I'm gonna switch screens really quickly. We're gonna come back over to my Linux machine. Hopefully you have yours up as well. Okay, so this is the graphic user interface, much similar to your Windows or your Apple machine. Okay, it's the stuff that we can see. It is. It consists of the applications, the folders, the, uh, uh, the internet access, the things that we can see and touch with our mouse or with your finger. So in file system, you have trash, file system, home. Okay, right now we are home. Click on home. And it's gonna show us that we are in the 
slash home slash Cali directory or folder. In this home folder, you will see, and I hover over this, it'll say home Cali too. That's Your screen's not showing. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Thank you for showing me that. My bad. Share screen, start all over. Okay, this is my desktop. Very similar to your desktop when your Windows and your Apple's machines, okay? Maybe your Linux machines if you have a, a total Linux computer. Okay, you see the trash folder, file system, the home, any other applications that you may have on that particular desktop. Okay, um, click on file system. You'll see all of the different directories within the root um, folder or the root directory. There is nothing above root. Right, there is no parent above root. There are only roots children, Ben, Boot, Dev, etc. They call this Etsy, by the way, but that was ironic, etc. <laughs> then from there, I'm going to click on the Cali situation here, and you'll see slash home slash Cali. Now, if I go back up to file system. And then I scroll over here to home, you'll see the home folder, the home directory. Within home is Cheryl, Cali, and Naomi. Okay, these are the different folders that exist. If I continue to scroll down and click on Cali, you'll see now desktop, documents, downloads, etc. If I click on desktop, there is nothing in the desktop, but I'm in home Cali desktop, All right? Trash is just trash. Click on documents, home Cali documents. Music, pictures, videos, downloads. And there is a ton in downloads. I do CTF from time to time. So um, there's a lot of material. There's a folder here called Censored Photographs. If I click on Censored Photographs, you will now see that come up as a directory that I'm in. And these are the censored photographs that I have in that folder. Okay? So we are essentially drilling from the top of the echelon all the way down to as far as we can go. And if I wanted to create a folder in here, I can just create a folder Give it a name, right? Just like it says, new folder, that'll do. And then my folder slash directory comes up and then I can click inside of that and you can see that I'm further down and then I can create my documents and all of that stuff from there. Okay, so this is basic <coughs> navigation into the GUI version of um, Cali Linux. If you come up to this dragon here, all right, this, look, this should look very similar to your Windows machine. And you click this little button for dragon, you'll see favorites recently used, all the applications, which the applications and usual applications are here. This is what Cali Linux is known for. You'll see information gathering, vulnerability, analysis, all of these different tools that you have access to right now. How do you use them? We just take our time, we learn how to use them. We, uh, we work together, we attend classes in BIC, and we do it. There's also Cali documents on the right half. half. Cali Linux, um, that'll give you, that's the website. You can look at Bug Tracker, you can read more on offensive security. Um, by the way, if you know anything about offensive security, and I'm, I'm actually studying for my old OSCP, it's a bear, but um, it is as a 24 hour exam in which you actually hack into machines. It's pass or fail based on what you can do versus um, taking a test and just, uh, it's the theory based pass or fail test. This is a hands-on test. 
at the top here, we have terminal emulator, which you know, if we click on that, that's just gonna open up a terminal like this, what we've been working in. Um, you have your file manager, which are just all of your folders, which is everything that we just went through. Okay, so clicking on the dragon will take you to some obvious things that you can just look at and they kind of self-explanatory to understand what is in Linux, what it does, what it's all about, how to access your browser, your text editor, uh, the, the uh, Cali Linux website, etc. If you click on this second tab here, the top left, that's just going to restore the minimized window. So you're going back and forth, back and forth. I'm left clicking, left click. Okay, to the right of that, that's your home Cali folder. And you can also open the folder there, open a terminal, review the desktop, documents, downloads, and all of your different directories or folders within. This box here, of course, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, this is your uh, terminal. Oh, let me click off of that. This little black box here is your terminal. Just various ways to get there. Just like in Linux, you can also right click and um, open terminal here, desktop settings, etc. And then here, if you want to do screen captures and you actually want to um, uh, do a screencast, you can do that here with this particular button. So this is just a brief overview of the GUI. You'll see your windows that you have active are right here in the middle. I have quite a few active. If I wanted to close a few, I just open them up and close them. Or do other applications, whatever that may be. Then on the top right over here, you got the time. You'll see the wire connection, whether it's active or not, your networking capabilities, you, your volume, your different notifications. Uh, the computer, um, you can lock screen, or you can even log out. So that's a basic overview of what this GUI about in Kali Linux. If you have Ubuntu or Paris security, you can take a look and see what those GUIs look like. Um, very similar, but obviously quite different. Okay, so now I'm going into my Linux machine. I'm gonna clear my screen so that I can see everything and Collapse that sub terminal, hit Q, clear my screen again. So I have one screen up. I want to start you from the top. While we're executing these commands, I want you to pay attention to this little lime green or this green um, symbol here, this character. This is the tilde, T-I-L-D-E which is located next to the number one in the exclamation. You have to shift tilde. That represents, if I type PWD, that I am in my home folder, which is Cali. As soon as I open up my folder, that's where I am. You'll also see it say Cali at Cali. Well, what does that mean? Right, if you typed uh, who am I, it'll say Cali. That's gonna show you the username that accesses this actual Kali Linux machine. That's the username, okay? Who am I will give you the username for the machine. If I type in host name, it's gonna tell you this one on the right here. That's the system name, right? What is host name? Host name resolution description. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So if you change the username and change the system name, obviously you're going to get new information. Feel free to try that as we are talking. Um, meanwhile, in Cali, I have I did show you earlier how you can go backwards or go back up. So PWD, I'm here. If I type CD, which is change directory space dot dot enter it's going to take me back up to echelon into the home folder if i type pwd to confirm i am no longer 
underneath home. I'm in home, right? If I type list, those are my folders that are in there. So I want to go back as far as I can. I'm going to see these case dot dot. And now I see a slash, right? Not slash with a name, like slash home. That's the home directory. I'm just in slash. Slash represents root. PWD, it'll show you a slash. That is the tip top of the actual um, Kali Linux or your terminals particular kernel. So as we look at this and we remember what it is that we did here, click on say file manager and I click on file system. I am now here and you see bin, boot, dev and all of these other directories. Okay, let me come back to my Linux machine was here and I'm gonna list what's there. Now that I type list to see what's in that directory, I see the same things, bin, boot, dev, et cetera. I was trying to uh, close it so I can show you both um, screens and it's causing me problems. CD slash list. Oh, well, I can't find it. I'm trying to find a sweet spot so I can shrink this uh, machine a little bit, um, shrink this terminal, because I, I like it um, full screen when I actually do my work, but I can't seem to grab the edge. Try it, no, no joy. So now I'm in root. I listed what's there. When we open up our machines, I dictated that we will be in the home directory. So this is what we call the relative path. What I wanna do is go into my home directory. In order to go into a directory, I need to change directory. So I type CD for change directory home. Now I'm in my home folder, my home directory, LS, now I wanna go, I see that there's Cheryl, Callie, and Naomi. I wanna go into my Callie directory. I type CD space Callie, and now I'm in my Callie directory, which is also represented by this tilde. I type list, and that's exactly where I started from. Okay, I'm hoping everyone gets this. If you have a question, please ask. Say something, because I can't see the chat at the same time. If I wanted to go into my downloads, can someone tell me what I can type to get there? CD downloads. Say it again. CD downloads. CD space downloads. And now I'm in my downloads. Excellent, thank you very much. Right? So now if I wanted to see what's in my downloads, I would type what command? We've already done it. LS. LS. And I can see all of the documents within my downloads, all of the other directories even in my downloads. Good job. Okay, so that is what we call relative path. We list what's there and we just type in the correct command to do this. If you need help doing this, you can always go to Google, how to open directories in Linux, how to open zip files in Linux, how to open um, files in Linux. And then the, um, the different um, uh, commands will come up. You are commanding the computer or the operating system to do something and it's going to give you the outcome. So can someone tell me um, how to go back to root without, with just one command? And here's a hint, it's called relative, uh, absolute path. What can I type to go right to root? CD space four slash. 
and I did it up top. Excellent. So now that's CD space forward for slash PWD. Let's check it. I am in root list. Let's verify. Man, I'm exactly where I want to be. So now, what if I wanted to go back to downloads? This is kind of tricky. Some of you may not get this yet, but I wanted to use what we call the uh, absolute pathway. Um, I know someone knows this. Can someone tell me how to get back there with one command? You could try a CD tilde and do okay. download. List, and then I can go CD downloads, right? All right. Okay, so that was two commands. You were close. That was good. So I'm going to go back, CD, forward slash, back up the root. That was, that was excellent because you know where you are. And that's what I need you all to realize. Now, how do we go back into downloads with one command using the absolute pathway? You can type in the whole, the whole thing, the whole path. Good. How do I type in the whole path? We're going to type change directory, CD, space. And what do I type next? You're going to have to put your home directory or use the tilde and, and do a slash and do downloads. So this is what we're going to do. You're doing well. I'm going to put the slash, just like we see here, which means root. OK? Then home. Then home. Then the, then underneath. Then the downloads folder you want to go in. Or the, it's downloads, right? So we're trying to go into downloads, right? But what's before downloads? Cali. The user. Cali. Then I put the slash and then downloads because that is now our absolute path. So if I go backwards, just to show everyone that may not have gotten this, I want to get this CD space dot dot, right? PWD, home Cali, right? CD space dot dot, going back up, PWD, home. CD space dot dot PWD root. Whew. Did you all get that? Okay. How do I get to my my absolute path to my Pico CTF folder? I want to get here. How do I get there? What do I type? You can tell me, it's okay. Don't be scared. Can we start by PWD to know where we are? Okay. PWD, I'm gonna do just that. So it's important to know where you are. So print working directory, and we are in which folder or directory? The root. We're in root. Now we're trying to go to the Pico CTF folder right here. Um, and what command do we type? One command to get us there, the absolute path. You just not. Say it again. CD. CD. Now what? Now you got to go home. Going up. So what do I type first? Give me the character. Slash. Slash. Yes. Callie? If I do Cali, the home Cali, home slash Cali, Cali slash, slash Pico CTF, Pico CTF. <laughs> Yay, you did it. Um, you were nervous, weren't you? <laughs> yes. Um, we want to turn that nervousness into confidence. You know, CD slash home slash Cali slash Pico CTF, and you're there. Now, just so you know, this is case sensitive. Let's just say I type, I'm going back to uh, home. If I type CD slash home slash Cali slash Pico CTF, look at what happens. See how it says no such file or directory? So if you type a capital letter, you make sure 
if you type it um, correctly. Does everyone understand that? So if I'm in Pico CTF already and I have various folders here, uh, think relative path. How do I get into cryptography from here? CD space cryptography. CD space cryptography. Uh oh, what are the type of spelling? I can't spell. Why have a doc? That's what the tab is for. <laughs> that is true. I love the fact that he said a CD space dot dot. So he just mentioned something. If I just press CD crypt and hit the tab button, ooh, it should spell out all the way for me, but mine didn't. So you can't take, oh, no wonder. CD space. I can't spell again. Make sure you spell it correctly. This is a great lesson. We can learn in failure, right? Spell it correctly, hit the tab button. And this slash at the end is optional. Some people use it, some people don't. Okay, any questions about this relative and absolute path? You all think you can get around? So here, here's one, this may be a little advanced. How can I go from here to the bin folder, slash BIN folder? What do I type? CD slash bin. You're gonna have, it's in the root, so you're gonna have to go root and then go bin. That is exactly right. I gave you the answer though, but I just wanted to try to help. So I typed in CD root bin, right? It is definitely in the root folder, right? Woo, look at how many documents are there. So I verify, I type CD space dot dot, a backup list. And this is where I want it to go, right here. And we got there. So understanding the difference between absolute and relative path are very important just to get right to where you want to get to quickly. If that is something that you want to do. And if I want to go right back to documents, I have to remember my path and make sure I get right back to documents and spell them correctly. And now I'm in my documents. Any questions about navigating from the GUI and the CLI? This went kind of fast, but I want to be able to ensure that you have this information. And I, have a question. I will also give you this information um, after this, uh, um, big people will get this information sent to you. Go ahead with your question. So when you type in like the the um, the home user, can you uh, substitute uh, that for uh, like the tilde? I think I was trying to say that earlier, but when you were typing in the full path, can it, instead of going like home slash whatever the user is, just do. Can I uh, type C D slash tilde, tilde like this? Right. Instead of doing like the whole, the home and you. Yes, you can. So right. you do that and it'll okay. bring you back to your, where you start at home. Right. right. And that's the good thing about okay. memorizing these little green icons on the left. So you can see where you are. And then you could have CD, CD to documents. All right. Thank um, you. You're so welcome. Uh, what, what I was trying to do is to show you all the, the two major ways to tr to get around the relative and um, uh, absolute pathways, because depending on what you want to do, you may not want to do this. You know, all the time. It may it can get a little tedious. To you know, it's a lot of typing. Okay, I'm gonna switch screens. Stop share. Come back to the other side. Watching my clock here. They say time flies when you're having fun. It is definitely flying. Uh, screen, share. Can you all see my screen? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Now, some of you may know this. There is a command line interface in almost every um, operating system. 
It's where the developers work. It's where the hackers work. The good guys, the bad guys, the ugly guys. And um, Command Prompt has about, this is Command Prompt, Microsoft Command Prompt, about 280 plus commands. A lot of these commands may work there, but there are also different commands there. So you need some place to research to find out how you, you can do all of this stuff in your actual command prompt on your machine, just different commands. Although CD works. Um, if and But if you, instead of CD space dot dot, you will use CD dot dot, no space. There's also in the Mac terminal, they call it terminal right here. And that is the GUI for that. I mean, the CLI for that, excuse me. In Kali Linux, we are in terminal, so we are familiar with that. There are too many commands to count. <laughs> too many people create their own distros. There are way too many commands um, for the average user to use. So good luck with that. That's why we have to have take good notes, um, have a good resource to use to look up. Uh, take training, constantly train. Even when you're an expert, you may still learn something here or there. And then, of course, Microsoft PowerShell, which is basically a command prompt on steroids. So uh, they call them commandlets. They'll, uh, it's much, many more commands than that because some of the commands in command prompt will work in PowerShell, but a lot of the commands in PowerShell won't work in command prompt, just something for you to know. Okay, I just wanted to point that out. Also too, this is what we just did. Pathway starts from the current directory. This is the relative path. Here are the examples, CD, Cali. This is, if you do a LS, LS, what is in that particular directory that shows up, that you can just type CD and that name of it, and it will pop up and you can now examine that folder. If you were anywhere in um, the terminal, far away, all the way in the uh, Etsy folder, and you want to go to home, you can type the CD space, CD space tilde uh, to take you to home Cali, or you can type CD slash home to take you to home. Or you can type the CD slash home slash Cali to take you to Cali. If you want to get the desktop, you have to type it in exactly like this to get there. Remember, the pathway always starts from root, which is this slash. So you put the slash first, if you're going to do an absolute path, and the names of the folders in the appropriate order, going downward, top down. You are in the current directory, you just type the directories that are within that directory or folder. You good? Okay, so this is how this maps together. All right, let's just say CEO is root, like we said. And these are the subdirectories under root, and these are the subdirectories under user, subdirectories under var. I'm not going to get into it, but each of these particular folders house specific things. And the way we, we move from customer service to management accounting, we have to move from our particular folder up the chain all the way around to get. Um, so if I were in include, I would have to go include user all the way over to var to get the spool. You know, we have to memorize those paths. Here's another uh, a visual depiction for you to understand what root looks like in the GUI and what root would look like in the uh, CLI. Kali is in the home folder. So I'll put this here just so that you can understand where you are. Going to the next one. This is the visual depiction of what Kali looks like in the folder. Okay, in your Linux machines, these four commands are other ways to be able to move up back and forth, you know, the slow way, if you will. If you type CD space dot 
and feel free to type this in your commands while I'm talking to you. CD space dot will show you the current directory, just like PWD. I mean, it looks slightly different. It may not do anything, but it'll show you that this is where you are. You can choose your, your, your method, whichever one works for you to go back and forth. I've done this several times. If you want to go up to the parent directory or go backwards, you know, depending on how you look at things, you want to go to the parent directory, you type cd space dot dot. So that's how you come out of Cali back to home. That's how you come out of home back to um, um, root. And then someone else in here, we did it. If you type cd space tilde, it'll take you to your default home directory, which in this case is home Cali. If you type cd space dash, it'll take you to the previous directory, one that you were just in. Okay, again, this information will be available to you so you can practice. As I stated earlier, within, this is a, a visual depiction of everything within root, most of it. Essential binaries are in the bin, the slash bin folder, okay? Slash boot. You have static files of bootloader, slash Etsy is host specific system configurations, et cetera, et cetera. What you should also know is in the home folder, are the user home directories. That's where we start. Cali is under home. That's where we're doing all of our work. Most of the time, some of these folders will not allow you permissions to actually manipulate things in it, such as root. Home directory for the root user. You may not be able to make any um, changes in there. Um, and or if you do it make changes, and then you're gonna probably have to type sudo. May even have to type sudo space suit work but i won't get into that right now okay moving forward two commands i would like for you to try um i'm going to share my screen so that you can see them these are called tree and ranger um they are um, you know almost fun commands when i when i first saw it i was like oh man that is awesome and um let me clear my screen so you can see a clear screen. Um, if you wanted to install it, sudo apt install tree. Mine is already installed, but I just wanted to type that so you can see it. If you wanted to install ranger, sudo apt install ranger. Okay. Since mine are already installed, I'm gonna type tree. I'm in a home directory, type tree, hit enter, and it gives me information. 21 directories, 53 files. This could be very helpful depending on whatever it is you wanna do. CTF, capture the flag, or just doing some work there. What is in here? It's showing me my directories, it's showing me my zip files and PNGs, you can see exactly what's inside every folder. Gives me a hierarchy. You can also use the ranger command. It gives me the same information, but with your little cursor button, you can see what's in the Naomi folder, which is empty, the Cali folder, the Cheryl folder, I'm in home. I can go up to Etsy and see what's there. Examine what's in dev, boot, bin, etc. I can go as far as I need to or want to, all by using my um, my cursor on the keyboard, using the little um, arrows. Excuse me. Okay. So which one you like best is up to you. But I wanted to show you that. Any questions about those two commands? Share my, my screen again. 
Hopefully you all are trying these things on your own. Okay, the um, basic anatomy of a command. Now this workshop is three hours and I, can, I think I talk too much. Um, I probably need like eight, but this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna um, talk about this briefly. The anatomy of a command, and this is just basic, is to understand the utility name and note that each utility, most utilities will have options. And then some of them won't have an argument, but others do. For example, list, long, all, sample.txt, which will open the information in that particular text file. Otherwise, if you did list long alone, it's just going to show you everything that's there. eSpeak is fun. If you want to try that, you can get the computer to actually speak to you and talk to you. And if you put sample.txt, it will read the file to you. It's an electronic voice, and I do believe it's uh, multilingual. The reason why I show this is because as we continue in Linux, there's more than one way to skin a cat, as they say. Okay, what does that mean? Um, in certain commands, it may be dictated to do one thing, but in reality, it'll do another. So let's go to, it. here's an activity. This is gonna be on the screen right here. Open up your text, um, open up your um, terminal, and let's do number one. Let's create a directory or folder. Um, all you have to do is type in MKDR and type in a folder name. I had an example here of Thanos, right? Any um, Marvel fans out there, Avengers fans? But anyway, um, go ahead and create um, a folder and let me know if you've actually completed it. Okay, how many of you made a folder? I did. All right, and was it was it easy or difficult? What did you do? Can you tell us? I made sure to be in the correct directory or? Hold on, right. let it me, let me it, look. sorry. It doesn't matter. You can make it in almost any directory. But oh, okay. Everyone, everyone is in home Cali. Now yeah, continue totally. with the rest. I just want to make sure these instructions are accurate. Everyone go ahead and just type it out. And when most of you are finished or all of you are finished, we'll keep moving. So make your directory. If anyone has a problem, let me know. Number two is how you create multiple directories. Note how I have Iron Man with an underscore. Because if you're going to have a two word directory, you need to put the underscore, otherwise you'll have iron and man. You'll have four directories instead of three. With creating a file, if you're doing penetration testing, ethical hacking, same thing, um, any exercise, networking, <clears throat> behooves you to take notes. So quickly create a file to take some notes. Type touch, give it a name, dot text, and if you go to your GUI in your file system under the, the appropriate folder, you'll see that .txt file actually there and you can read your information. Also too, is if you do a, a the cat function, which we didn't do yet, then we can actually learn, um, see what it is that we wrote. Echo, that's usually one of the first commands people type, especially in programming classes. We like echo, we put in hello world. Um, this is basically letting you know that, hey, I'm telling, I'm commanding this computer to do something and it will, um, uh, yes. If, you, if it's multi-words, you can use an underscore. That is true. No commas when making multiple files. True, don't put any commas in there. I wouldn't do that. Um, 
But anyway, Hello World is usually used by Echo. That'll be one of the first programs you'll, you'll type if you do like a uh, any type of programming class. Creating a file with notes, you can type Echo. In quotes, you will put the information that, that you want to put there. Then you, um, you're going to append it. You use a little greater than sign to a particular um, file name, whether it be one word dot text or two words dot text. Um, and this is how you write it out. Then when you do a cat or you um, open up the document, xdg dash open and the document name, then you can read the content. If you type cat forward slash name dot text, um, cat means concatenate. That's basically, I want to see what's there, display to me what's there. Um, but if you use the cat with the the uh, the greater than sign and the particular text name, um, you can type information on the second line. Nothing lasts forever was something Black Widow would say in her movies, in the movie. And then you can press enter to go down another line, press control D to save it. Okay. If you press Control C to get out of it, it probably won't save. So make sure you follow it in this order. Type whatever it is you want to say, press Enter and Control D to save. Create multiple files. Easy. Type touch, one file name.txt, two file name.txt, three file name.txt. You can also create that create that PNG that doc um, um, other type types of files, you can create zip files. Um, text was easy just for this particular assignment. I just wanted to see you all do this. Okay, so how are we doing? I just briefly went through it. Do I have one volunteer to want to create a file? Share the chat. Come on, share your screen, let's get it. All righty then. So you wrote touch new file dot text. Looks like nothing happened, but when you type ls, you will see new file dot text. Simple as that. Awesome, outstanding. So. Um, did anyone have any trouble with anything here? Because if no one had any trouble, then that means I actually wrote this correctly one. Very easy, awesome. And also two is, um, um, I just wanna make sure that I'm teaching you basic things that you can, that you can do. And I wanna make sure I type in it correctly. If you have troubles, let's try to fix it if we can. Since it seems like everyone has done well with this fairly quickly. Okay, um, can you please give them poll two? Wes, uh, Doc, quick, quick question. Yeah. If we're um, wanting to add text, and so we, so we did um, cat, Better than Black Widow, right? And then enter and then type the text. If we wanted to, would we do echo if we wanted to just type it right into that particular? Um... You can use echo. See, look, number four here. Can you see my screen? Yes, yeah, yeah. There you go. Just go ahead and do that right there. And you can add that text right into it. And then what does the, if we do two greater than, that does it save over or does it add to it? Say that again. Two, the two, the two what? If, yeah, two greater hands. Right. Yeah, yeah. So one you can you can type over it, and one you can add to it. Add to it. Okay. Yes. So um, I didn't go through that on purpose, but you know. Um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Just... Various things that can <laughs> be done here, for um. But if, you, if obviously if we want to create a file really quickly, 
it's really not difficult. I'm hoping that everyone is understanding that, man, okay, so what I want to do is command it with this utility name. And then I'm going to look and see what the options are with my help function or my, my, uh, my manual function. And then I'll type the command name plus that dash option. And what file do I want to manipulate or do? I just pull that up. So when we're doing like CTF and stuff, we are just going crazy. We are adding files, we're changing stuff, we're inputting them, we're catting them, we're, we're manipulating them. We're doing a bunch of different things. And that's how we will, will end today by, by doing some of these things with challenges. Okay, any more intelligent questions? Okay, moving on. Okay, the poll should be up, poll two. Um, that shouldn't take you longer than 22 people. Knock this out. Thirty seconds, and we can be done with that, and we'll keep on going. Oh, this one should be open ended. So I don't see any places to type it. You may want to type in your information in the chat since it's not here in this particular poll. Okay. I'm going to minimize this and keep rolling. Okay, now in your machine, your terminal, I would like for you all to type ls l. Or you can type LA or type LAH. Hopefully you're in, um, you know, Cal home slash Cali or wherever you created documents. When you do so, you should see a screen that looks similar to this. Does everyone see a screen that looks similar to this? Check in the chat. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. So do you see like D, R, W, X, or and some dashes and so forth? Because if you see that, you're, you're, look, you're doing the right thing. Um, I, I'm trying to show you that the D stands for directory. Okay, so there may be directories, there may be files, they're indicated by this first column here will be indicated by, you have D, you have L, you have the exclamation mark, they all have different meanings. That, that is a quick Google search to find the answer. But in this particular case, these are this, this is standing for the directory. The first three letters are a, um, they're all together, okay? So it's one unit. R means read, W means write, X means execute. So what we are looking at here are the file permissions for these particular directories and or different files and other commands within this particular folder. Read, write, execute. Okay, so if I may, um, uh, and this first column, by the way, these are the user permissions or the owner of this particular um, Kali Linux machine or this Linux terminal. Okay. This second column of RWX, which in this case is R-X, these are the group permissions, right? These are like role-based type things, rule-based type information in your group edit. Um, these are the group permissions. So if you have a particular group and you want them to have permission, then you, will, you can change these settings here, okay? And then you have this column right here that says everyone else Else, right everyone's permission right this is an entity or someone in the world or some person that's on your network and they should not have access to your user and group stuff but they happen to be in your system for whatever reason in this particular case this this allows read and execute but they can't write anything so group permit so user permissions they can read write and execute group permissions they can read cannot write uh, and can execute. 
And then everyone permissions they can read, can't write, and can execute. So if I'm a person, uh, say a bad guy, right? Or a person that's just in your network and I decide, you know what? Uh, I wanna see what the file permissions are. I can come in here with various commands, take seconds. Um, I can change the permissions to anything I want. I can remove permissions from you as a user, from the group. I can create my own um, user ID. I can um, give myself godlike permissions to do almost anything that I want to do within this particular uh, system. And that is why Linux is so powerful and also you know, kind of scary depending on what you do and what you're into. Okay, this first column with these names, you have root, you have John D. That's the file owner, person who owns a file, the person who can do this user permission stuff. Then you have the group name. What is the name of that group or that department? Be a sub name, it could be human resources or something, right? And then they'll have those similar permissions. These can also be changed. There's um, There are commands called uh, Chone, C-H-O-W-N, there's C-H-G-R-P, change group. Um, there's um, another one, escape, escapes me right now. But um, the there are, mod? yeah, change mod, thank you very much. Change mod, where you can actually change permissions and um, you can do this in a, in, a, in a couple of ways. We'll talk about that in a minute. Thank you very much. So owners are assigned permission on every file and directory. Um, and that owner can assign group permissions or even all permissions. Really up to them. File permissions are not what uh, some stuff we're going to really go into, but you know what? It, it's something that you can learn a lot more in. And it's very important to learn that for many reasons. File permissions also uses this particular schema. They use this They use this number system. Zero is no permission. One is execute permission only. Two, and you can see that dictated by the dash dash X and my bad, zero is dash dash dash. I can take away all permissions, right? Um, if anybody's ever been compromised before, um, somebody been in their, their machine and somebody do that to you, that's when they take your stuff over and you ransomware and all kinds of good stuff like that that we hate. Execute permission only. Two is write permission only, dash W dash. Three is dash WX, write and execute permissions, et cetera, et cetera. I'll let you read them all yourselves. So let's just do one real quick. Okay, bang. I'm gonna share my other screen. Feel free to follow along. Okay, it looks like you can see my screen. Looking to see what I have in here that I can mess around with. All righty then. So I'm gonna do an ls dash al. Sometimes you can combine options. In fact, you can. So instead of just doing one, I'm doing two options together. And all of these different things pop up. These are my files, my directories, my, my, my com other commands and executions, it's crazy. So you can see here, I have the root directory and I have the home directory. Um, I'm gonna shorten this up. You know, I'll just leave it because nothing is. But again, I don't know why I was typing CD. Okay, I'll just go with this. So I have a um, text file, say flag.txt. So what I'm going to do is use the I'm gonna first I'll type in what is change mod. I'm gonna use change mod. 
change file mode bits. So what I want to do is do the change mod function. Oh, let me do this first. Man, change mod. Good practice for you to get in. So we know what it does, what it is, how to execute it, change mod option mode, the file, right? We can do a combination of letters. UGOA controls which users are access to the file will be changed. The user who owns it. Other users in the files group, other users not in the files group, or all users. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do right now. I'm not even gonna get into this other stuff. So I have list, file, uh, uh, text. Oh. No. I was trying to list flag.txt, my bad, I put file. So what we wanna do is we wanna manipulate this particular file. Feel free to open up a file that you wanna change. And I wanna change the permissions by change mod. And I'm gonna use the numbering system really quickly. 777, so I'm gonna have to explain this in a minute. Flag.txt, enter, something took place. I'm gonna open it back up again. And what did I just do? I just changed the permissions of this particular file from read, write, not being able to execute for the owner and read and read only to read, write, execute for all of them. Tell me why this is good or bad. Think real world. It's like you said before, it's, it's bad if somebody gets into your, uh, into your system and they, they lock you out from being able to do anything from it. So I had a session, and you are so right. When I was teaching at um, Quantico, I had a session where I actually taught my students how to create viruses and put them into pictures and, and text files and stuff and send it to people. And we call it prank, uh, print day. And it was only like for 15 to 30 minutes, but we created a bunch of pranks, which are basically little mild things that would happen. And you know, I, uh, when they click on the, on the image of the pretty kitty cat, then it would shut down the computer in five seconds or something like that. And one guy was like this, I can't get it to work. Every time I do it, my machine shuts down. And everyone was laughing. So- um, That's stagnography? Yeah, we did some stagnography with that, yeah. Um, but the thing is, we can change the permissions of these different files, these images, and then we can create pranks. We can go in there and, and do really um, good stuff or bad stuff. Depends on what your mission is, what is your goal. So, Go ahead and try this number system. Um, um, by the way, let me switch screens again. Make sure you look at this. Change my 777, flag.txt. I want to change screen so you can see the permissions. Just try that one. If you're um, more advanced and want to try another one, go ahead too. It's one way to do this. Find a file or a directory and change the, the mode. Let me know when you're finished. And if you want, change it back to what it was before. Just so you know, what I did, seven, represents RWX, which was my owner, the first file. Then the second seven was for the group section. And the third seven was for everyone else or the, the outside user that has access. So that's where I got my seven RWX, seven RWX, seven RWX. 
And if I wanted to change it to a seven, six, five, I could, or a five, six, seven, I could, or six, seven, five. You can change these numbers quickly in any order. You can add a user and then you can give your user rewrite, execute for everything and take every other document and give them no more permissions. And you're essentially pushing out other users in the system from doing other things. I'm gonna come back to the other side. I'm gonna let this go, okay? Coming back over, sharing. Here's screen two. Okay, so I can change this to any type of mode that I desire. As you can see, I, ch I changed this from rewrite execute to read, ex read execute, these three. Then I changed to read write, but no execution, and then read write execute for the last one. I'm looking at the chat or I'm listening for voices. Are we understanding how to change the mode of a particular file or directory? Yep. Okay, good. Now you can also do it the, with the letters. Here's an example. Change mod. Type in a U for user, or you can type the O or the G or the A, which is what, um, let me show you again. Man, change mod. You can have the U option, G for group. O for others, A for all. So in this particular case, change my, still messing around with this particular folder. I'm gonna type U, what do I have there? I'm gonna add right to this particular folder to my user, my, oh, I'm sorry, take away right. No, that's user, yeah, to add right to my flag.txt ls dash l mm -hmm. uh oh didn't mean to do that ls dash l flag dot text and what i did was i gave it the ability to write i was manipulating my user column only if you look beforehand let me go back up let me see if i can do it again keep everything together Couldn't figure out what I did wrong. I put I didn't put the T at the end. So now I just changed it back. So I have R dash X here, but up top I have R W X by executing the uh, change my command with the user. And I'll pull it up here so you can see it. So I changed the mode user. I'm in the user column only here. I'm adding with a plus sign. If I wanted to take away, I would use the minus sign. And I'm adding what? I'm adding right. And this is my argument to the flag.txt. If I wanted to do this for the group, I will put a G here instead of a U. And then I will put add or, or, or subtract. And then I will put whatever my letters are that I want to do, whether it be read, write, or execute. I can also um, add them all with the uh, U G O A equals. So let me see if I can show that really quickly. Uh, Excuse me, Doc. Yes. I know it's possible, but is there, have you ever seen a, an application where it's uh, write only to a file? 
an application for it or just being able to um, change it here? I just tried it and it was, I was able to do it. I'm just trying to think of why they would allow it. Oh, um, just, I, I don't know why. I didn't create it, but you can. You can do almost anything you want with this, which is scary too. What, so you're asking why would someone do that? Yeah, is there an application where I'd actually have, uh, say, a user group write, only write to a file, but never maybe if Maybe if the file, I guess, was public or something, and you wanted mm -hmm. to see what people had to say. Uh, that's just the first example that popped to my head. Mm -hmm. But in general, uh -uh. that's not what we want. We don't want yeah. others to be able to write to our files. Mm -hmm. Especially this Linux is like the back door into almost everything. Mm. And there are exploits out there and um, Metapreter and everything that can be used. And if people don't update their systems on time, Metasploit, we can just use those exploits and go in there and cause havoc. Mm. But um, hopefully everyone is understanding how this is. I want to at least show you how to add whatever you want it is that you want to add you can add it to all you can any combination you want it will actually work I don't any, more, question. any more questions I do. good jonathan so with i've seen the change mod with the plus x is this like um just to execute across the board is, is that why they didn't have anything else so you can use plus um any of the letters. So let me right. let me go through it again. So I go through the manual. And this paragraph right here, a combination of letters, Ugoa, controls which users access the file will be changed. Now you can use the, the plus sign, cause the, the, the file bits, mode bits to be added to the existing file or you can use the minus sign, cause them to be removed. And a dash cause them to be added and causes unmentioned bits to be removed except that is directories unmentioned, blah, blah, blah. These are the letters here. What about the equal sign? I think you used the equal sign before. Yes, you can use the equal sign too. I thought I used it. If not, I had it here to use. Um, where is it? Where is it? See how I did it here? Now you can have this to equal read only, equal write only, equal execute only, any combination that you can do with these, these three letters. You can do the G only for the group, the O for others. You can use the A for all, and it'll do it all for you. The bottom line is, what do you need to do? Command the terminal and the argument or the, the text file to do it. You don't know how, you may need help. So help dot change, change mod help or man change mod. And let's look at the options and let's see what, is, what exists there. Which one do I wanna use? And you'll be done in seconds. It may scare you if you did it done right because it doesn't always tell you. You just be like, wait a minute, nothing happened. But that's also why we do our list for that. And I did this particular document on purpose because man, if I did LS by itself, we'd be searching for it. It's right here. Uh, why not? Say if again? I made a mistake, if I made a mistake and did read only for all three, root will still override it, correct? If you made a mistake and did what for all three? Read only. Oh. If you need to pseudo it, is you talking, are you talking about? No, if I actually said UGOA equals R and hit enter. <laughs> oh, by mistake. wow. Wow. I've never done that one before. Did everything? <laughs> <laughs> now that's, that's, wow. I want to hack your machine. Yeah, just type it too fast and just hit enter and now the file is read only for everybody. Yeah, exactly. So 
definitely don't want to make a mistake. I don't know how to undo that. Now that you mention it, I don't know if there's a way to undo that. You'll have to go through all the files one by one. So be careful of those little mistakes. Man, that's crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna switch my screen again. We're gonna press on. We're actually almost done, believe it or not. I'm gonna go to the share screen thing again. I have to hit the right one, I hit the wrong one. Share screen three, okay. Okay, I have another exercise for you. This one should be kind of fun. I'm just gonna leave my screen here. Go ahead and try it and let me know. I'm just gonna show you how to search the web from the command line interface. I just thought it would be something that could be useful to you. Um, you know, depending on what your purpose is as a security researcher, um, you know, who knows? Maybe you can search Wikipedia and that's what this first one is, Wicket. If you install this in order as it is, you should be able to search for keywords or whatever it is you want. You can search for these two and you can search for another word. Some words don't come up, just letting you know. In the second one, install Surfraw. Um, Surfraw is a tool that will allow you to go to particular search engines and search for whatever it is that you want there. And I have two examples here, Google and YouTube. Go ahead and try that. And then I got a few questions here at the bottom. You know, just, I'm just trying to give you some things to type in here to actually do. So does anyone want to volunteer and share their screen while this is being done? Mine is already installed, so I figured it may be boring. Okay, I'll wait till you're done. This should only take a few minutes. Um, the download for this could be kind of extensive, but you can open up another uh, terminal and you can download both of them simultaneously. Let me know when you get it to work. So how are we doing? Anybody got Wicked up yet or Surf Raw? On my phone taking notes. Okay, still installing. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm gonna show my screen over here while you all are working. So I'm gonna clear this screen and I'm gonna type in Wicket. And I typed in these instructions or, or automatically since this is a basic, a basic Linux class. I am now in uh, searching Wikipedia for Linus Torvalds. And it tells me that Linus Benedict Torvalds, born 28 December 1969, Finnish American software engineer, et cetera. Just so that would be a cool way to actually uh, install this command and use it. Um, and I was working with some people and they said, can you search the internet from command line? And I said, yes. And that's why I'm showing this particular assignment. 
just in case you may want to do the same. And I just search for Wicked Linux, and there we go. That's the information there. Somebody is asking a question in the chat. And my chat is not opening yet. Okay. I'll get to it in a second. And to use Surfraw, type in Surfraw, and let's just say I want to open up Google. It'll actually open up Google in your browser, but it just takes you there. And now I can search for whatever it is I desire. All righty then. Got two, two terminals open. I only want one. Can you go back to those? Uh... Sure thing. I'm going to go right back to now. I was just trying to do that. Then I go to share screens. The instructions, right? Yes. There you uh, go. I downloaded it. All righty then. Dash G, okay, still installing, still installing. Okay, good. Thanks for communicating with me. It definitely helps. Key logger sounds possible, yeah. MSF console, steganography, changing information. From an admin perspective, it's convenient. Changing access to sensitive information, exactly. So I'm seeing good stuff in the chat. I'm sorry I couldn't have it right there readily open for me, but uh, I am reading it, reading backwards and seeing what you're putting in. And if you want to learn what the different options are, you can always type in um, man wicked or what is wicked, wicked dash dash help. Same thing with surf roll. Okay, did anybody get anything going yet? Got the wicket to work, but not the surf raw. Not the surf raw? What did you type in for surf raw? You spell it right? Uh, yeah, same thing on the screen. I get it went to the download. I mean, uh, the, the install. So there was a time when I had struggles with the train. And I had to go into, I don't remember if it was slash bin, and I had to go into the games folder, and I had to download it there to make it work. Um, but if you want to troubleshoot that after today, by all means, we can get together, and I'll go through that. All right. All right. I don't mind doing that. You got something, Jonathan? No, that was me. I was going to tell you. Okay. Oh, okay. So, um, how many people um, did not get Wicked to work or Surf Raw to work? I don't want to move too fast, but we only have, um, I think, five or six more slides to go. Needs install command on line one. Surf Raw doesn't install for you, huh? huh? Don't you hate that? It works for me. It don't work for you. Um, uh, uh, but anyone that's having issues or troubles, hit me up on Slack. We'll get together, we'll do a Zoom, and we'll go right through it. For Surfra, I needed to do the install command. Oh, I got it. I got it. Uh, sudo app dash get install. I wonder if I just a typo I did. I don't know, but that makes sense. Okay. As long as I see victory and people are actually getting it complete, I'm going to press on to the next slide. Everybody good with that? Yes. All right, then, pressing on. Um, take a picture of this and um, memorize it 
I will also give it to you in the chat and or contact me later and we can go through this and anything else you may have after, that's not even in scope. Okay, so um, um, I, I, I meant to put this someplace else in my slides, but these are uh, 2020's top 10 best Linux distros. And notice how Kali One Linux is actually number one. Um, it's open source, it's popular, um, but all of these other um, distros are other things that you may want to consider and try for yourselves. I just wanted to show you some of the different names and um, in your journey to continue to learn and apply practices to Linux to understand why am I doing this and what am I doing? Here are some other options that a lot of security researchers actually do use, okay? Okay, so we're segueing on to our, our end of our um, program, if you will. And this is hopefully uh, gonna be kind of fun. We're gonna solve some problems in Linux with uh, Pico CTF. Um, all right, this right here, I'm gonna show you on the next screen what it is that you need to do. It'll take you 30 seconds to a minute tops. And then I have specific problems and I'll show you that we're going to actually solve. My uh, monitor is tripping, but that's okay. Okay, so we're going to reverse engineer this vault door training. We're going to use Netcat to um, connect to a particular challenge and see if we can solve that together. We're gonna to do a little bit of forensics. Right, we got this really weird text file. We are going to find a flag for each of these things. We're going to do the numbers, see how cryptography works. We're going to do some web exploitation. Then we have one last assignment, which we're going to solve this binary um, task. So let me start again really quickly. Give me the fast download. We're going to do reverse engineering. We're gonna look at some general skills, forensics, cryptography, web exploitation, and then binary. And this will be uh, the last six slides. And I just got a couple of slides to, to, to end today's session that I'm hoping to do and we'll have some fun doing this. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we all need to follow suit. Um, let me come over here and share my other screen. Oh, share screen, screen two, come here. I'm going to go into, hey, can you all see my screen? No, not yet. No. Okay, let me hit the little button. That's probably why. Okay, you can see my screen. Okay. So um, I'm going to clear this. Okay, we're gonna to go to our browser, click on this little dragon and open up your web browser. Mine is already open here. And you wanna have a, a, a terminal open simultaneously. I'm gonna get rid of all my other terminals for faster switching. All of my switching will be here at the top. All of your switching will be here at the top as well, okay? Um, this could take anywhere from 15 minutes to, to 30. Eh, a little longer, it's really slow, but I doubt it. So this is what we're going to do. There we go, I'm where I'm supposed to be. I'm gonna go back. In order, we're gonna come here to Google and we're gonna type in Pico CTF. Dot org. Okay, I don't want to go too fast and I don't want to go too slow. We're inside of Kali Linux. It's easier that way. It's what we need to do. You're going to click on picoctf.org. This is a free place where you can go and test some of the Linux skills and maybe even some of your Python and other open source intelligence skills. 
um, of challenges. Um, on Sundays, I actually, um, I have a Patreon and I um, help a lot of people do CTF and explain to them how to think and what they can do. Um, what I want you to do is go here and click on get started. You are a learner. There are three steps to log in. Sign up for it. You're gonna receive a confirmation email with a verification link. Make sure you verify it after you sign up. Then guess what? We just start to learn and practice. I'm going to log into my account. I am logged into my account. This is the new 2020 Pico CTF. I've been doing Pico CTF for the past couple of years. Um, I think currently I have 3450 points. Um, I know I have several thousand in the other ones, but um, they don't work as well as they used to. I used to have classrooms in there and I teach my students some of this hands-on cybersecurity stuff. I, I need you all to log into Pico CTF and let me know when you are here in the Pico Gym Practice Challenges. Okay, and feel free to say something because I can't see the chat. I'm here. I'm here. Right. Yeah, I'm here. Didn't take long to log in, did it? No. Awesome. This is free and you all have it for life. So if you want to do some free CTFs, there you go. Okay, I'm going to give it a few more seconds for everyone else to get here. Please chime in, picoctf.org, create the account, and then go to the Pico Gym Practice Challenges. Okay. I'm going to show you all a video. It is 52 seconds in length. There is a reason why I'm showing you this video. I'm hoping you can grasp it. Um, not like you can't. I'm sure you will. But there's a reason why I want to show you. Share screen, 52 seconds of your life. And I'm going to press play. The title of it is Need Help Figuring Something Out. Here we go. Have you ever wished you knew how to do something and not done it because you didn't know how to do it? This condition can be devastating, but there's a cure. It's called Google. It's a free website you can access 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's helped millions of people recover from not knowing how to do stuff. Do you have friends that don't know how to do stuff? I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Maybe it's time you told them to Google it. Have you ever wanted to learn how to do something but you don't like reading words? YouTube. Okay, that's what I call dark humor. Dry humor. Um, many of us know how to do that. We understand the concepts of Googling something. We just have to type in those right key words to find what we need. Sometimes if you're a visual learner, we may need to click on images and see what it looks like. Other times, man, I need to hear somebody and see what it looks like. We click on videos or we go straight to YouTube and type in what we're looking for. You know, I spoke to some people yesterday. They needed help with their uh, virtual machine, installing their virtual machines, uh, virtual box or VMware. We did that. I also gave videos to show. I um, Some people had needed help with installing Kali Linux on an Apple machine versus a, a, a Windows machine. I showed them how to do that and or they did it with the video that I sent to them. So in CTF, um, we're going to look up these concepts, okay, so that we can learn how to complete them. Simultaneously, we will earn points. So I'm switching screens really quickly. Share screen. This is the screen I want. We will learn earn points. But the most important thing is not about the points. It's about the skill and what you know how to do. 
These are the categories. We're going to do at least one exercise in each of these categories. When you finish, you can do the rest of them, just like I do for fun. You can see I've been kind of busy. Um, this is what I do in my personal time. Do you want experience? Do you want to show people in your resume you have experience? When you're working with me or you're working by yourself, you're working with Nico Smith or anyone else in Vic, write down web exploitation, cryptography, reverse engineering versus CTF. A lot of people don't know what CTF means, a lot of employers, and even still so, what does CTF constitute? What does that mean? That means you are learning some specific skill. Then from there, if you wanna drill down and learn the ins and outs of it, find the course, find a mentor, find a, a study group, and let's get together and let's tear into what web exploitation is. Let's tear into what cryptography is. Give me more examples. Bookmark, write your notes, keep your stuff. I hope I'm resonating to you with what I want you to do so that you can succeed. For these particular things here, now we're going to do the following. Um, we're going to click into the reverse engineering section. That's my first one for you. And we're going to do vault door training. 66% of the people liked it. 3,529 solves is worth 50 points. So this is what they deem as fairly easy. I'm clicking on it and we can read what the assignment is. Your mission is to enter Dr. Evil's laboratory and retrieve the blueprints for his doomsday project. The laboratory is protected by a series of locked vault doors. Each door is controlled by a computer and requires a password to open. Unfortunately, our undercover agents have not been able to obtain the secret passwords. So we're looking for secret passwords for the vault doors. But one of your junior agents obtained the source code for each, uh, each vault's computer. You will need to read the source code for each level to figure out what the password is for that vault door. As a warm up, we have created a replica vault in our training facility. The source code for the training vault is here. Now, if you look behind you, you will see vault door one here for 100 points. There's another vault door three for 200 points, number four, et cetera. So this is a series. Um, because of time, we're only going to do one. But what I want you to do is click vaultdoortraining.java, and then I just want you to save the file. Click OK. From there, we're going to come all the way to the top here, Pico CTF, Cali, right? Let me close out some stuff, too, to make this a lot easier for me and for you. Clicking on my Cali, okay? So I'm in my home, my tilde, my home Cali folder. Um, how do I get into uh, downloads again? Can someone tell me real quick? CD space downloads. CD space downloads, okay. Of course, I'm just, I gotta test you to see if everybody's paying attention, right? I'm in my downloads folder because that's my default whenever I save something from online. Then I'm gonna type LS to list things. Now I got a lot of stuff in here, up in here, right? Now I wanna look for that particular document that I downloaded, vaultdoortraining.java. Come back here and then, I guess I downloaded this several times, but here's vaultdoortraining.java. Now I have a boatload of commands that I'm gonna to send to you all as an attachment to this PowerPoint for you to go through. But I have vault door training Java. I did talk about, and you did one exercise to open up the contents within vault door training Java. Does anybody remember what that command is or no? 
concatenate. EAT. EAT, and then I'm going to type, which is the concatenate, and I heard someone say that. Vault, door, I'm trying to spell it right. Training.java. Oh, man, it opened up. Okay, now, in Pico CTF, we see the contents. In Pico CTF, whenever we have to write a flag, we have to write Pico CTF, two curly brackets, and inside it will be the actual flag. This is how the flag will be written. Hopefully everyone is seeing that. Here's the hint. The password is revealed in the program source code. Okay, so I'm coming back here and we're looking for our source code, right? As I'm reading line by line, I'm looking for something that's going to say either Pico CTF curly bracket in curly bracket source code with my naked eyes. And what do I see? I see this right here. Return password dot equals. And it's telling me what the password is. So I'm highlighting it. I'm going to copy the selection, come back over here, and I'm going to type Pico CTF, put my curly brackets, and paste my content. Um, this probably won't work. And the reason why is because I pasted the quotes simultaneously. But if I take the quotes out, Submit the flag. Hooray, you have solved this cha challenge correctly again. Did you all see that? Yes. Is anyone having trouble with that? I am. Um, I had came a little late to the class. And when I used to try to use that cat command for the box for training, Java. I'm in my you sound kind of far away. Can you come closer to the mic? Yeah. Can you, is this better? Uh, let me see. I apologize. Uh, I, I, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm so. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now better? Say again? Can you hear me now better? You're getting better. Oh, let me tell you. It's up. I got it up to 100. I was just, I'm in my download folder and I was trying to do the cat vault door training. And just saying like the command or you no know, such follow the directions. What did you type in? You want to share your screen really quickly? Yeah, definitely. Um, all right, share your screen. All right, cool. And I apologize for coming to the class a little late. <laughs> That's okay. You yeah. grown. Okay. So can you do a list? Just LS. LS. Yeah. Let's see what you got there. Ooh, I don't see anything. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you have to download. Um, so you have to go into Pico CTF and register an account really quickly. Yeah. So I go to the, okay. Go to the top left to the dragon. Oh, you're in your actual machine. So I'm in the VM. I'm you're in the VM? Yeah. Okay, did you download VoteDoorTraining.java? I did not, not, no. Click on it. I'll see it if you do. It looks uh, like it's down at the bottom left. Oh, yeah, it is. Yep, yep, it's right here. I'm sorry, I did. Okay, are you sure you're in the VM? Yeah, I'm using uh, VM Workstation. Okay, are you... Okay, and your Linux machine is in that VM Workstation? Okay, I see yeah. it. Yep. Okay. So where do your default documents get downloaded? Um, they probably got to get downloaded. I got a workstation too, to the, like the left of it, those the tabs up left. So you got to be in the same one. You're not in the separate one, are you? No, no, I'm in the... Okay. So click that button, open it. Yep. Okay, you need to close that. Right. So right now your 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 issue is uh I don't know I guess it's simple you just need to um 
download it inside that Kali Linux um, machine or try right clicking it. Open it up. Yeah. Click on Vault Door Training. With 50 point right there, click there. Can you right click it and save it as? No. Save link as? Um, you don't look like you're in your VM. <laughs> no. You no. cancel that, okay. cancel that, and I'm gonna tell you what to do. Yep. Click on your terminal. Oh, right there, I'm right here. Yeah, you're already there. Uh, now, now go to the dragon on the left, top left. Yep. Click that. Go to web browser on the right. Yeah. Click that. Oh, you are you know I'm space. I'm sorry. I opened up. Yeah, oh, you did. I opened it. Yeah, <laughs> That's okay. Know. So I'm now bad. log into yeah. picoctf.org. Okay. I was on the host awesome machine, my bad. Uh, so. Yeah, and then you already signed up, so just yeah. sign, log in. I'm sorry, I gotta look on the other one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you may as well close that. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Minimize yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll close it. Okay. Don't worry, we're not gonna hack your machine. Uh, no, it's all bad, right, brother. I've been, I've been. I, you, you don't know how long I've been wanting to deal with like Cali Linux and now I get the okay. not only my late, but okay. All right. All right, go click on reverse engineering. The first one, 50 points. Just click it one time. Save. Okay. You gotta do that cat. Um, yeah, now do LS. Oh, okay. Now you can concatenate it. Indeed. There you go. Thank and then it, so it, and it gives you the return equals is the password. Um, and as you continue to go through this, these things become difficult. And you will have to read in Pico CTF. Sometimes you can use a command, you can use grep, you can, you, there are a whole bunch of different commands you can use if you know what you're looking for. Right now, this is one of those, let me read this and try to find what it is. You can even look up the, ter the file type and everything, but we already know this as a JavaScript. All right, so now you should have earned 50 points. So actually type, highlight warming up with Java See what in quotes in print it says return password dot equals. Right, highlight. The uh, the parentheses. Too. Just the information within quotes. Oh, okay. Otherwise, you'd be like, I don't know why that's not the answer, and it because it, it's very specific. You type it wrong, you're done. Copy Indeed. that. Right click. Copy selection. Indeed. Come back. There you go. Type in Pico CTF, just like that. I didn't even try to. Don't erase anything. No, I didn't try to uh, paste it. There you go. OK, good. I just saw that something delete. Some net flying by my face. CTF. Saw something delete. Curly brackets, which is uh, next to the enter key, just above it to the left and the right. OK, yeah. OK. Don't forget to put it at the end, too. Yep. Hit submit flag. Uh-oh. You, you fat finger something. I don't know. Doesn't look like you typed it wrong, but. Looks like he's got one parentheses and one curly black. Bracket. Oh, okay. Change, change your parentheses to a curly bracket. Backspace. And shift, shift the one up, uh, up the P. 
to the right of the P. Yep. All right, hit enter. Make sure the, the one in the, the far right is a curly bracket too, the one next to the P. Yep, that's right. No, that was not, that wasn't a curly one. This one right here, I thought. I think I got a not just a curly bracket, not a bracket. Just yeah, is that a character after the eight? It is. Is that what it is? Damn, I'm sorry, man. Ah, right, so yeah, it was curly bracket. Yeah, and some right. flag. Sorry about that. Hey, we got it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. This is perfectly okay. We learn from our mistakes. So one character mm -hmm. off changes everything. Okay. Something that I said very early on. Okay, awesome. So you're up to speed. Can you stop sharing? I'm going to share my yep. screen again. Yep. Awesome. Let's go to the second. Um, where is it? Share screen two. Is share. All right. We got 50 points for those of you who have done CTF for your very first time. You're now seeing what it takes to get that done. Okay. So now I'm going to go to the second assignment, which is a general skill. So I'm going to come here and we're going to do, um, what is this, general skill, which is here. And we're going to come to, where is it? What is NetCat? 100 points. So everyone should be here. General skills, what is NetCat? Using NetCat is going to be pretty important. Can you connect? Here's your hint, NetCat tutorial. So if I click on that little button right there, it'll open up this tutorial, which will teach you what NetCat is. It'll teach you the different synopsis and the different options, et cetera, et cetera. There's some examples. We're not gonna go through that for the sake of time, but what we will do is we're gonna highlight this particular web link and we're going to copy it, okay? 29138, that's the port, and that'll help us to get the flag. Okay, so we're going to come back into our Linux machine. Okay, I'm going to paste the selection, okay? We know that the port number, right, is 29138. What are we trying to do? trying to net cap, right? So that is the command for it. So I'm gonna highlight all this really quickly. Right click and copy. Because before we do that, I want us to at least find out what net cat is. This will take a second. We have various ways of how we can do this. What is net cat? TCP IP Swiss Army knife. Netcat's a powerful function. We can do netcat slash help. Says invalid option. So we may not want to do that. Let me see. NC dash H. Woo. So it's going to give us, you want to connect to somewhere. You use NC and the options and the host name and the port. The listen for inbound traffic options, you see all these different options right here, okay? We could also man netcat. If we man netcat, it'll give us even more data, right? We can netcat strings, file names, gateways, numbers, etc. So as far as this particular thing, and you can also go to Google, you can go to YouTube, and you can look up different information on what netcat is, right? So what I want to do now is I'm going to paste my selection. Well, I guess I'm not going to paste it. I swore I wrote it. Netcat, jupiter.challenges.pico.ctf.org. The port is 29138. Go ahead and hit enter. And it's letting you know you're on your way to becoming the NetCat master. And this is my flag. Good question, Doc. Yes, sir. Why didn't mine work from my downloads folder? I had to go back to my home directory. 
You said, why didn't it work from downloads? Correct. I thought it should have. I mean, yours did. I about to say, mine did. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Got me there, but good question. So now we want to test it. We want to put in our flag information. Everyone, did you all get the same flag? You should have, or a similar flag. It may be different. Submit that, and hooray, you saw the same challenge correctly again. Let's see. I see chat chatter in the chat box, but I can't seem to open it when I click the button. That's weird. Okay, so I'm not sure what you said in the chat, but you can say it if you need to. Okay, the next one we're gonna do, and we, we only have five of these in, in um, here. We're gonna go to the forensics folder, and we're gonna go to extensions for 150 points. Okay, is everybody there? I'm going to assume you are there. We're going to, this says, this is a really weird text file. Can you find a flag? Want to click on that text file? I'm going to save that text file. Click OK. OK. And, and I'll just throw this out there. There are various ways to solve a lot of these problems. I'm just showing you some basic ways right now based on what it is that we did. We learned some basic skills. So, I'm in my downloads folder, I'm LSing, and I'm looking for that particular file name. Let me see, what is it called? File.txt. Uh, man, I got too much stuff in here. It could be this one, file. So um, I wanna know what kind of file this is. Oh, no, no. I think it's flag.text. Yes, flag.text. Flag.text, right? And I have two of them. But um, so tell me, um, if anyone knows, tell me what you would do first. If not, I'll just go through it. You can't need it, too, isn't it? Give me some options here. What can I do? What should I do? There's no wrong answer, by the way. Got the file. Open the file. Cast the file. Flag. That's it. Woo wee! Look at what that <laughs> produces. So who wants to read through this and find a flag? Probably not, right? So this makes you want to say, what is wrong with this file? It's not readable, right? So we didn't go over this command yet, and um, maybe we can do this in another session or something. But I want to use something that I know. I say, well, what kind of file is it? I want to say man file. Because if you man file, it will determine the file type. And it will give you some examples on how to use it. So I'm going to get out of here. And I'm going to type um, uh, file flag.txt. And what does it tell me? flag.txt png image data. Why is a png image inside of a .txt file, right? It gives you the size, 8-bit color RGB, non-interlaced. So that makes me say, what is it that I got to do? So now let's talk about a, 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 a command that we didn't get to, right? We're going to, I'm going to type in this particular file here, man move so you can see. The uh, move file, you can also, with the move file, you can also rename the file. So we know that this file, based on our limited research, is a PNG, not a .txt. OK, how can I change that? So I'll type move. Flag.txt is what we're talking about. And it's a PNG, so maybe I'll change it into a PNG. Hey, that seemed to work. So I type list to see what's there. I'm looking for my flag.png, in which I got two of them, right? I got one and two. There's a JPEG. Oh, I changed the first one to JPEG on that. So then from here, I'm going to open this. So what I did, I did a Google search. 
right? How to open a PNG. Hold on, I messed that up. In Linux. And I see this, this, this link here. And it shows me a variety of ways. Well, actually, this one is Image Magic, which I've actually used. I love it. I use it all the time. To open up this PNG, this is Debian or Ubuntu based. This is the script to update and add it if I desire. This is CentOS, which I use at work. It's Fedora, et cetera, et cetera. Using it, I can type display logo.jpg and I come back to my image here and I want to try to open up this flag. So here's my flag.png that I created. Um, I can do, um, I, already, I, think I, I think I have image magic already open. So display flag.png. Right, there's my extension. There are various ways to do this. There are various commands. You can use xdg-open. Uh, you can, um, I can't think of any. There are a boatload of different ways to open up images. So with your Google search, you can just do that. Okay, which is the reason why we watched that first video. And then you wanna type in your flag. Since I can't copy and paste that flag and I already have points, go ahead and do yours and enter your information and hit submit flag. Um, Does anyone have any issues? That is one way of many ways to skin this cat to fix it. Who had an issue? Um, I just want to know how did you get to that extensions part? Ah, okay. So did you download this? This text file? Hello? You you left me. Um, I can't hear you anymore. Oh man, who was talking? I don't know who was talking. However, I couldn't I couldn't get it to open up. Uh, okay, good. Share your screen real quick. Let's do it. Right, yeah. Stop sharing. Nor, my nor, nor, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, nor could I get that last that last flag to. Okay, you gotta say something sooner. I can come, I'm Johnny on spot with the okay. helping you. You got, you, oh, here, here, here. Okay, share your screen. Yeah. Okay. You definitely go to your Pico CTF. Let's start from the beginning. So when I, ah, I know why you didn't do it because uh, you need to, um, you need I, to download the file. I you need to install the uh, type LS real quick. Yeah. You got flag, you change it from flag.txt to flag.png, right? Yeah. So what you would do is you would go to Google like you did, or it's your favorite search engine, uh -huh. and then highlight that image in the middle, in the top. Highlight your search stuff. Yeah. Because you got you got who to open. So I want to change that. Uh, like down it. below, you know that's good. Type uh -huh. in um. Type in um, open PNG in Linux. Enter. Click that first one, how to open PNG. Okay, and this person says, keep going down to one answer. He used mine open. That's one you could use, but you did for me. Can you talk to the computer froze up? She's good now. Okay, good. So um, um, I've never used this one, but type, um, go to your downloads folder. On a, on a let, on a, I'm sorry, um, your downloads, uh, oh, go okay. back to yeah. terminal. Yeah. yeah, download. Type in sudo apt apt space install mine open. Right? I've never used this before. Enter. Oh, spell it right. Oh, yeah. Uh... We trust you. Uh, type in your password. 
Okay. Take care, Jeffrey. Type in your password. Yeah, this, it's just I'm in the terminal, it's not going to show, right? No. <laughs> okay. Um, unable to locate package. Okay. Don't worry about it. Um, what I want to do, stay in download yep. just to speed this up. I want you to type in, maybe there, type in XDG dash, op put a dash, open, space, what is it, flag.png. Let's see if this opens. Uh, there you go. No doubt. That's one way. The one we did was image magic. It's just, right, this, the, there are various ones. So if you don't have the appropriate um, package tool, then you're going to have to uh, research online to find it and install it. Okay? Okay, cool. And this, this, this is one more quick, quick question. Why I couldn't get, get that flag up top for that when I did the command uh, uh, that NC Jupiter? And I got you're on your way to becoming the Net Cat Master, but then when I tried to put it in that flag right there, and Pico in one second. Hi highlight it again. Highlight it right there. Right here. Right click, copy selection, go to Pico CTF. Where's that? Um, oh, that's in general yeah. skills. Uh, yep. All right, was it warmed up or something? Where, where oh, cat. Yep. Right click, paste. Hit enter. What, what am I doing wrong? Like, I don't know. Oh, click um, click on the right. On who? No, no, click the, in the, where it says Pico, opposite of Pico CTF. Click next to the curly bracket on the far right. Oh, on the, the far, far right. right. Yep. Hit delete. Make sure there's no F spacing. Oh, not backspace, but delete. Oh, crap. Put the curly bracket back. Yep. Hit enter. Oh, someone said the no. port number changed. Yeah, I had a different port number than you. Yeah, your port number is 40752. My port number was 29138. So this is what you do. Copy mm -hmm. 40752. Copy. Copy 40752. Right where you were. Uh huh. Go I'm copy gonna, it. What do you mean by copy? Like, right? Um, click on it and then um, highlight it and copy it like that. It's 4052 to get the flag. You see that number in red? I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Okay, right yeah, there. I'm good. I'm good. Right okay, I got, it. Yeah. I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> no, I'm very, I swear I'm so new to this. I, I'm a little familiar copy. with it. That's okay. Yep. Now come back to download um, your terminal. Yep. Click in there, go down, scroll down so we can see everything. Yes. Now hit your up arrow. Hit it again. Hit it again. Hit it again. Hit it again. Do 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 it till you see Netcat. You good? Oh, okay. oh, no, go back down. Uh, oh, don't, don't do it. Uh, what are you doing? Stay there. Right here. <laughs> Stop making stuff. Uh, no, go back to where you were. Right here? Stay there. Stay there. Oh, Stay there. Don't that's move. Okay. Stay there. Stay there. Backspace. That's support. Okay. I got you. Five, five backspaces. They put it there. Right click and paste. Got you. Paste you. selection. No doubt. Hit enter. Woo, there you go. Man, Highlight okay. it. No, no. All right. Copy selection. That's a topic. Hit the flag. That. There you go. Cool. I appreciate it, man. You know, no, that's okay. I, I told you, if we were in person, it's so much easier. This whole online stuff, I wanted to reach out and grab it, and I couldn't. But you got it now. I'm glad you asked the question. Thank you. 
Yeah, okay, let's appreciate proceed. Everybody's now go back to. Uh -huh. huh? No, I said I appreciate everybody's patience. Yeah, yeah, so go back to forensics. Uh, All right, and click on um, extensions. Yeah. Cool. Right now, you see your flag up there somewhere? Just find your flag, paste your flag, then you should be good to go, okay? All right. We only have two more, two more Pico CTF, and then we have one last thing and we can be done, okay? Oh, let me stop sharing. All right, then stop sharing your screen. All right, then, that was fun. <laughs> fun and stressful at the same time. Okay, did everybody get extensions? Yes. All righty then, thank you. Okay, let's move on to the last um, two. This next one is a um, cryptography one. So we click on cryptography and we're gonna go to the numbers, the very first one. Click on the numbers, the numbers. What do they mean? Hint, the flag is in the format Pico CTF. Note how it's in capital letters versus this one's in, in lowercase. So that's how you're gonna write your flag. What are we going to do to get this? We're going to click on numbers. We're going to hit save file. We're going to go to OK. Right? That's what we do. We come to our terminal. We come here. We're going to list it. And we are looking for the numbers. Man, I got the number numbers.png. So what could I do? What should I do first? Uh, do file the numbers, check the file type. All right, so I'll do file the numbers just so we can verify the type of file it is. The numbers.png. And it tells us that it's an actual PNG. So now, what do we do now? So we can run the image. Right, um, image, this, image magic? Image magic, right. And what is the script that I actually have to type for image magic to make it open? Display. Display, and then I'm displaying what? The underscore the numbers. numbers dot PNG. Bang. Now there it is. Okay, now what do we do? We can kind of see that there's a whole bunch of numbers here, and they got these curly brackets. So my guess is that this is probably representing the word Pico CTF. B-I-C-O-C-T-F. And this is going to be something that we need to find out and decode. So how do we decode these numbers to text? Tell me what I could do. You guys are smart, smart Googlers. Don't be afraid. So I'm going to come here. And I'm going to type numbers to text and Linux. And I'm just going to poke around and see what it is that I can find, right? Maybe I'll find the right one. Maybe I'll find the wrong one, right? This is taking a minute to open, right? Before I do all that, I need to write down that information because that information was um, was um, was uh, not exactly spelled out where I could understand it, right? Sixteen nine three one five, et cetera, et cetera. So to save time, um, I do believe I, I wrote it down over here on my own. So let me um, come and find that value really quickly, and I'll just show you all how to do it, and then you'll go home and do it on your own. Okay, ba, ba, ba. copy. Coming back. I'm looking for this script, how to add numbers to line and text. That's not what we want, right? So I'm gonna type in a particular URL that I know we can find this. It's rumkin.com tools, cipher, numbers. 
Index.php. I had this pre-saved. I typed runtime wrong, put an N in there instead of an M. So that's what happens when you fat finger stuff. Run. Can. Com slash tools. Okay, it looks like it's there. There are various other tools you can do like this. Uh, other, other, various other tools online. So one of the first ciphers that, that kids learn is letter number cipher, right? See that A is one, B is two. So what we want to do now, we need to decrypt. So I need to type my message in here. And man, as soon as I type that in, look what came up. And it says, Pico CTF, the numbers Mason. So this is basic encoding and decoding, which, which they've been doing since the beginning of time. They, we do it in wars. We don't want the bad guys to hear our intel, our data, to get our data. They can use it against us. They'll crush us. It wouldn't be good for us. OK, we come back to our challenge over here in Pico CTF. We type in that information right here, and we hit submit flag. And guess what happens? It does not work. Why doesn't it work? What's the problem with what I just did? Because the Pico is capitalized. Actually, it says the flag is in the format Pico CTF. What the issue is, and that was a good guess, is there spaces that we need to account for. Any one extra space can cause an issue. Now that we have all these different spaces, and I took care of them, now I got my challenge. And I got my points, and I'm learning as I'm doing this stuff. And we're developing a methodology. What is my method? Am I going to man everything? Am I going to Google search it? What is it? Whatever it is. You know, you want to definitely read up more on what letter numbers uh, combinations out there exist. There are so many different patterns. They'll give you a headache. You see this index over here on the right? That thing will give you a headache. Um, there are cryptography goof gurus out there. They just love this stuff. I am not one of them. Okay, let's go to the last one. Any questions on that? I don't hear anything, so I'm going to move on. Um, yeah, here it is. The last one is a web exploitation example. And we're going to do, where are the robots? OK, there's two ways that I want to show you how to solve this particular problem. One is we want to do it in Linux. And the other one, we want to look at this URL. So what I want to do is I'm going to highlight this URL. Copy it. Uh, I'll come up here and I'm going to paste it and I'm going to press enter. So tell me what you see. You, we see welcome. Where are the robots? So where do we go from here? Anyone have any ideas? What in the what world do I do? You can right click and look at the elements of the page. Okay, inspect the elements, right? Not a bad idea, right? Let me look through here. Let's see, this looks like typical uh, HTML, uh, CSS type stuff. Go to console. I can look, I don't see anything in there. Debugger, okay, that looks pretty good. Network, right, style editor. Wow, there's a lot of script right there. Can you type something in the console? I think it's kind of similar to the login on Hack the Box. Okay, type something in the console. What do you want me to type? So I'm going to come back to Pico CTF, and I want to cheat a little bit just for time's sake. Okay? You have this too, an port number. But what part of the website could you tell where the creator doesn't want you to look at? So whenever you see something about where are the robots, if you were to Google uh, 
robots dot robots you see robots dot text probably what I need to do. So you could forward slash dot robots. I mean robots dot txt. That is URL. exactly right. So I'm gonna come back to where is it here. So I'm gonna get rid of this. Whenever you see robots, you want to put in robots.txt, just like we see here. And it's going to give you the user agent, the wild card that says disallow. And it's going to disallow slash 1B for CHTML. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to come back here to my URL. The backspace, robots.txt. Paste it, hit enter, and look at what it tells us. Is that our flag? That's our flag. Okay, now there's a whole lot of instruction that probably should go into this. But now I'm going to come back to my Pico CTF, paste my flag here, submit flag. And hooray, I solved the challenge again. But what I also want to do, show you how to do this in Linux. Copy, come back to my screen. Right click and paste that selection. And I can do the exact same thing. Robots.txt. Uh oh, my bad. I need to put in some more information, right? Hold on one second. Okay, in here, here's another command that we didn't go through. But since I wanna go to this URL, hit my little up arrow, come all the way back left and you can man this. We wanna go to that URL, we wanna curl it. Dash yes, too. You don't have to, but when I do that, it's going to give me that user agent that disallow that same thing that we just saw. So I hit my up arrow again. I'm going to remove my robots.txt and put in 1bb4c.html. Right? Okay, we're going to curl that, hit enter, and then embed it within is my flag. And that is my answer. Now you can do all kinds of other stuff. You can grep just the flag, you can do that stuff. But for the sake of time, I wanted to show you how, two ways at least, how to get this particular answer. When we come here, we enter our flag, we get our points. Did everyone do that and get the answer? I got as far as to get the HTML. You got as far as HTML? Yeah. You want to show your screen real quick? Yeah. Say again? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's talk about it. This is something really quick. Yep. Oh, man, what is that? Okay, so did you click on the link where it says where robots and click link? Was I supposed to say this one too? I can, yeah, I got to this page. You did that. Okay. Yep. So now copy that URL. Good. Now come over there where it says downloads. You can get rid of all that stuff real quick because I don't know okay. what that is. Okay. Just hit um, delete because your cursor is already there. There you go. Now paste that link. Oh, you know, before you do that, mm -hmm. type in man space C-U-R-L. Enter. Transfer a URL. That's what you're going to do. Okay. You see what that tool is used for? Mm -hmm. Now hit Q. Okay, paste that link.
My bad. Hit the left arrow all the way till you get to the front of the HTTPS. Now I want you to type curl. All the way in front of, in front of nope, nope, in front of the HTTPS. There you go. Whoa, put that colon back. Yep. Yep, right. go left. Go all the way left. Cursor oh. left. Oh, that's so bad. Left, not right. Left, oh. the other left. Oh, before the HTTPS. Again. Uh -huh. Before, yeah. Type curl, space, yeah. enter. Yeah. Oh, all right. Never mind. Enter. Backspace. Backspace. Just hit enter when you backspace. Enter. Enter. Woo. All right. Okay, good. Now hit the up arrow and put the S there. It says we're the robots. Oh, type in... um. Robots.txt at the end. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, no. You're going to have to cursor all the way to the right. Ah. Oh. All right. That's good. Robots.txt. TXT. Enter. Whew. Good. Now, you're going to highlight that. No, you know what? Hit the up arrow, hit the up arrow. Remove robots.txt. Type in 8028F. Dot, dot HTML. Enter. And there's your flag, do you see it? Yep. Right, you know what? There you go. Just highlight that and then tap it, enter that in, and you should get your points. And hopefully, you learn how to do this. Now, your job now is to learn more about what curl is and what it does, and continue to enhance by doing these real projects. And if I do a man curl, that'll give me all the information on it for. That'll give you some good information. Okay. Right. Now go back and get your points. Thank you so much. Don't make sure you take that less than sign out. Okay. This last assignment, I'm sending it to you all in the chat. This is the absolute last assignment, I promise. Where is the chat? Let's see. Um, sharing screen. I'm not sharing screen. I am chat. Uh, I want to send it to you all, but I don't see that ability. That's amazing. Chat. There it is. Okay, I want you to copy this information and go in and try to decode it. The hint for you is to decode this, this, um, this, uh, these zeros and ones that I just gave you. Do you all see that? Okay. This is what I just gave you. This is an example of binary exploitation. Let me know when you have the answer. What are you going to do? If someone needs help, feel free to say something out loud and I will direct you. Can you paste that in the chat box? I did, it's pasted in the chat box. What does this say? Did you send it to everybody? I, I don't see it. I don't see it. You don't see it? Okay, let me do it again, okay? Let me verify. Chat. Wow, that's amazing. It says, Okay, I see it now. It says privately. So I'm copying it again. Why does it say private? Let's see. Everyone, there we go. There you go. Thanks, sir. Thank you for saying something.
Okay, here's a hint. This should only take you 10 to 30 seconds to find the answer. And I see one person has found the answer. Good, Demi, can you share your screen real quick? Do you mind sharing your screen, Demi? Well heard that. Outstanding. Oh, okay, she used CyberChef. Can you explain to them what you did? Demi, we can't hear you. Are you on mute? Can you explain it? Demi, we can't hear you. <laughs> we can see you, can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Right. Awesome. So I just copied the, uh, the binary code from the chat and then I searched up, I went to CyberChef and then I searched binary and it from binary came up so I just put, pasted it in to the input area and then it just outputs as you type or put, paste whatever it in. So then I got- Right, so answer I got you right just there. completed Linux in the dark. Mm -hmm. All right, outstanding. So how did you know this was binary? How did I know? Yes. Um, I've- Taken on block for a while, right? Yeah, a little bit. I took like a class that taught a bit about binary and um pretty much like a security plus training class. So awesome. Yeah. So for those who may not have known this, you could have gone to Google and say, What is this? And um, I would probably put in like a fraction, and these zeros and ones represent uh, electrical pulses of off and on. To the, the to show uh, that's how that's how these keyboards and these computers communicate from computer to computer. They communicate from electrical impulses, and they're written in patterns. And binary by bi means two, so on off zero is off, one is on, and um, you can encode messages in this particular way. If you do a networking class, we can go deeper into it. I don't want to do that right now, but um, that's the key. You don't just solve problems. You try to find out why. You try to find out what every little component is, and you continue to enhance your knowledge. I'm going to share my screen for my wrap up. Okay. So if you did it correct, you just completed Linux in the dark. Um, Thank you all very much for putting up with me. Um, I definitely wish you luck. Um, again, I want to uh, give you just some of the commands that we did and many others that we can do. I had this as an assignment, but you know, doing teaching a course online, mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of different factors to contend with. Um, you know, make it, especially if you want to make it engaging and interactive, which is one of the things I wanted to do. Um, here are some, just as a short list of basic commands. I didn't even put together the, um, the options and the arguments yet that you all can use and will be using if you continue to use Pico CTF. You will also use commands that are not here. If you need assistance with doing anything in Pico CTF, just hit me up on um, Slack, hit me up on LinkedIn, Feel free to give me a call, whatever you want to do. Um, uh, the last thing I need for you to do, if you don't mind, is just uh, this self-assessment. I would like to find out where you are with this uh, training course, um, as far as what you learn, where you went to. You know, if you start off with no proficiency, did you at least get up to awareness? Did you get up to basic? Did you go to advanced? I mean, I don't know if anybody's going to ever do that. But that information will be helpful for me. And then from there, um, if anyone has any questions, 
feel free to ask me now. Um, uh, I'm all ears and I really thank you for putting up with me for the last whew, four and a half hours. I think I saw something in the chat. Trying to get to it. All righty then. Thanks tremendously. I'll take that. Phenomenal. I like that word. People learn much today. That is awesome. Amazing. Okay. Um, if we could do, I can't wait till COVID is done. When we all get together, the whole big family, we can just fly through stuff. You know, but you know, I, I, I did my, my best on this online um, process and I hope that everybody um, understood what we have. And I look forward for me to send you some of this information. I wanna give a shout out to my partner. So Ms. Cheryl Abram, she uh, works with me with PCCS, my company, and she is a professional learning designer. And we work um, for hours just to put this together so it wouldn't just be a lecture-based course. We wanted to put it together so it'd be very hands-on for you. And I'm hoping that um, you all got that from me today. So bring my one-year-old trying to learn as well. Bring your one-year-old. <laughs> can you just provide all the challenges? I missed like two. Hey, you can give me a call on uh, Mr. Mister. And then um, uh, reach out to me on chat. Doc West is my name on chat. Uh, Dr. Wesley Phillips on uh, LinkedIn. Feel free to send me a LinkedIn profile, connect. I put this picture here. You can all take a picture of it. But also too is I'm gonna give it to the big fam, um, headquarters personnel, CEO, everybody on down so that you all can actually do this over and over. I do not expect you to get it within this time frame and know it, I want you to keep going. Okay. Um, so if there are no more questions, thank you all very much and have a great week.